Word Magic, The Powers and Occult Definitions of Words, by Pao El Chang. Introduction. Words are used by people to communicate every day, yet most people still do not realize how words shape their lives and perception. Did you know that most people speak over 7,000 words per day? As of May 2016, there are about 7.4 billion people living on Earth. If you multiply 7,000 words by 7.4 billion people, you get 5180000000000000 or 51.8 trillion words. This means that at least 51.8 trillion words are spoken every day. Even though we hear and speak words all the time, most of us have little or no clue as to how powerful words are. Words are not just elements of speech or writing, because when words are spoken out loud, they transform into sound, frequency, and vibration. Words also carry information which plays an important role for communication. Without information we will have a hard time learning things and communicating to one another, because words carry information, sound, frequency, and vibration. They play a very important role in our lives. Furthermore, they can be used to harness the power of energy. We human beings did not always rely on words to communicate, because we used to be able to communicate telepathically. Due to certain tragic events in our past that caused our higher strands of DNA to mutate and turn off, words were introduced by the dark forces, groups of demonic thought form entities, as a tool to enslave us. The source of the dark forces is a cosmic virus. This virus is not your common virus because it is very intelligent. The main goal of the cosmic virus is to infect all living things in the universe with its psychopathic thoughts and death science ideology. Many people's minds are infected with the psychopathic thoughts of the cosmic virus, especially people who have strong psychopathic traits. Like any virus, the goal of the cosmic virus is to drain its host of energy into lipides and therefore its mission is to cause death and destruction throughout the universe. The good news is that this virus can only infect us when we live in a state of ignorance, fear, hatred, and irresponsibility. As we learn to live peaceably with one another and heal our bodies and activate our higher strands of DNA, our frequency will increase beyond the limit of the cosmic virus, making us immune to it. Today, many scientists like to call our higher strands of DNA as junk DNA, because they believe these strands have no function. There is nothing junk about the higher strands of our DNA, because nature would never create something that has no role to play in the evolution of the universe. Our junk DNA contains the higher and more powerful strands of our DNA. These strands hold one of the keys to unlocking memories of our true history and activating our dormant spiritual powers, for example, telepathy. The reason why our junk DNA does not seem to function is because it is turned off. In our current state of evolution, turning on all of our higher strands of DNA at once would destroy our health. The current state of our bodies cannot handle the high frequency energies that travel through our higher strands of DNA when they are activated. To safely activate our junk DNA without damaging our bodies. We need to slowly activate them in sequence. This is one of the reasons why DNA evolves very slowly because our higher strands of DNA are turned off, our spiritual powers and higher senses are weakened, making it easier for the dark forces to use the power of words to enslave us. All the languages of humanity were originally created by the dark forces as a tool to enslave us. If you study the origins and history of words and languages, and their connection to certain secret societies, you should eventually come to the conclusion that all languages are interconnected at a very deep level. Furthermore, you should know that the language system is a tool used by the dark forces to cast magic spells on the human race, so that they can enslave our bodies, minds, and souls. By the end of this book, you will know exactly what that means. Chapter 1 the powers of words and the art of word magic. Some spiritual teachings have suggested that the world is made of space, expansiveness and infinity, air, mobility, fire, temperature, water, fluidity, and earth, solidity. One these five elements are not based on physical qualities but spiritual qualities. Besides these five qualities of spiritual energy, the world is also made of words because we live in a world that relies heavily on words to communicate. When words are spoken out loud, they transform into sound, frequency, 
and vibration, which are some of the fundamental building blocks of matter. The physical world we live in is made of matter, therefore, it is also made of sound, frequency, and vibration. In other words, the material world was brought into existence using the power of spoken words. A spoken word has sound, frequency, and vibration, giving it the power to affect how energy manifests itself into physicality. Hence, the Bible verse in the beginning was the word. Phonetically, the term world sounds similar to the term world, which is the past tense of the term whirl, meaning to turn around, spin, or rotate rapidly. Before you were born, you were whirled into existence due to the fact that your physical body is made of atoms. What do atoms do? They spin and rotate very rapidly. This may be why the movie The Matrix has a character named Neo. In Latin, the word Neo means produce by spinning, spin. We've point to the term world also sounds similar to the term word and the term word sounds like the term were. One of the origins of the term were is derived from the old Norse word verfla, meaning to go round, spin. In English, the term were is defined as to go, fly, revolve, or otherwise move quickly with a humming or buzzing sound. The definitions of the words in bold font in the previous two paragraphs are all related to the word spin. Why the word spin? because everything in the universe spins and we live in a galaxy that spins. The world, world known as Earth also spins on its axis and the people living on it use spoken words slash words to create their reality. The language system is made of words because words have magic powers and are great for deceiving you. One of the reasons why words can easily deceive you is because they can be misinterpreted and misunderstood. Furthermore, each letter of a word can be rearranged to hide the word's deeper meanings. In addition, a word can be given many different definitions to confuse you. To comprehend how words are used to deceive you, you need to know the occult definitions of the word language. To find the occult definitions of the word language, you need to split it into three words and find the definitions of the newly created words to see what they mean. When you slice the word language into three different words, it transforms into language. Language equals lan. Gu, age lan is the feminine Chinese and Vietnamese name for orchid. The Vietnamese lan changes this to the masculine context meaning unicorn coming from ki lan. When ki lan is translated from Vietnamese to Latin, we get the word unicornus. The ki lan was a dragon type creature that was said to only protect the noble ones. It was also known as the quin. Gu is the god of war in the Dahomey mythology. So now we have Lan, a monster that protects the noble ones and Gu, the god of war. Age is the age or ages of the zodiac. Hence, Lan, Gu, ages are the monsters of war that protect the noble ones or golden gods. Audio, throughout the ages. 3. The language system is a good tool to help us communicate to one another. However, because of our ignorance of the power of words, the dark forces, false gods, have used it against us to wage war on humanity for many ages. They have used the language, language system to divide the human race and prevent us from communicating to people who speak a different language. This made it easier for the minions of the dark forces to engineer wars among nations, and therefore tricking us to fight one another instead of making the real perpetrators liable for their crimes against humanity. The dark forces are obsessed with wars for the reason that wars cause a lot of death and destruction, and therefore they generate a large quantity of fear energy for the dark forces to feed on. At the deeper level, wars are sacrificial rituals for generating negative energy and preventing us from increasing our frequency beyond certain levels. These things make it harder for us to ascend to higher states of consciousness. In the English language, nearly every word is carefully designed and put together in a way that produces magic effects, so that the people, the dark magicians, who created these words can trick you to play their con game to enslave the human race. Is this hard for you to believe? Read further and I will show you all the evidence you need. English is the language that the dark forces want to use to control the world. This is one of the hidden reasons why most countries are now requiring English as a second language. Even some of the governments of poor countries are urging their people to learn English. The good news is that if we can prevent the minions of the dark forces from establishing their one world world government, making English as the language of humanity would not be such a bad idea. In the occult world, 
certain words are used along with rituals and sacred geometries to direct and control energy to create certain desired effects. This process of using words, rituals, and sacred geometries to control and direct energy is known as magic or magic. Be aware that I am not talking about the magic tricks you see on television or magic shows. Most people will laugh at the idea of magic being real, but if only they knew what magic really is and how magic is used to control them, they would not be laughing. The world is dominated by magic. Until you train your eyes to see how magic is used to control you. You will never know how the world really works. The controllers who pull the strings of politicians are well aware of how magic works. Many of them actually practice the art of magic, which is why they are sometimes referred to as the dark magicians. Unfortunately, they like to use magic for power and evil purposes, instead of using it to unite humanity and change the world for the better. The most powerful thing in the universe is energy. If you learn how to control and direct energy, you can become one of the most powerful people on earth. The unlimited power of energy is the reason why the dark magicians, which are the controllers who are controlling the governments of the world, are so obsessed with the process of controlling energy. The key to controlling energy is magic, which is the art of using sacred sound, sacred geometry, and natural forces to direct and control energy to produce certain desired effects. What is word magic? The word magic is derived from Old French magic, Latin magicus, and Greek magicos. One of the earliest definitions of magic is the art of influencing events and producing marvels using hidden natural forces. Magic has a strong relation with magnetic and electrical energy. Did you notice that the word magnetic has the word magic in it? Take out net in magnetic and you are left with the word magic. The art of magic is often practiced along with certain words and sacred geometries. The common words that are used in magic rituals are the words that produce powerful sound tones when spoken out loud. These sound tones have powerful vibrational patterns, which are used to direct and control energy and harness its power. Sound is able to direct energy for the reason that it carries certain frequency patterns that attract energy to flow in a controllable manner. Furthermore, Sound is one of the natural forces used by nature to create crystalline structures and sacred geometries, which are some of the building blocks of matter. If you want to know and see how sound controls and directs energy to produce sacred geometry, study cymatics and watch these two fascinating short videos titled Cymatics, Sacred Geometry Formed by Sound and Cymatics, Science vs. Music. If for some reason the links to the videos do not work, do a quick search by typing the keywords of the titles of the videos in YouTube's search form and then click the search button. Because you now know what magic is, let us turn our attention to what words are, so that you know what the term word magic means. A word is defined as a sound or a combination of sounds, or its representation in writing or printing, that symbolizes and communicates a meaning and may consist of a single morpheme or of a combination of morphemes. When you put the term word and magic together, you get the term word magic, which means the art of communicating using sacred sounds and symbols to direct and control energy to produce certain desired effects. All words have magic properties. However, Certain words have more magic properties for the reason that they carry more energy. This is why during magic rituals certain specific words are used. Word magic can be used for good or evil purposes. Unfortunately, the dark forces and their minions are in control of the language system of Earth, and therefore are able to effectively use word magic to control us. The good news is that when we figure out how word magic works and become aware of how it is being used to control us, the magic power of words cannot affect us as much. Why words are more powerful than swords? Words are powerful because they carry energy, sound, and frequency, which are some of the building blocks of matter. In addition, they carry information that can be used as knowledge to create or destroy things. When this knowledge is experienced into wisdom, it becomes very powerful and can be used to expand a person's consciousness and spiritual powers. This is why applied knowledge is power. Did you notice that the term words is an anagram for the term sword? Switch the letter S in the term words to the front and you get the term sword. Words are like swords because they can be used to harm and cut you, in a way, 
Words are more powerful than swords due to the fact that they can harm or heal you at the deepest levels of your being. In the King James Bible verse John 1 to 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This verse is talking about the force and information of the universe, which can be expressed through words. One very important thing you need to know about the King James Bible and other versions of the Bible is that they are written in allegories. So if you read them literally, you are not acquiring the right information. Another important thing you need to know about the King James Bible is that it was translated to English from the original Greek, and therefore when it says in the beginning was the word, it is talking about the source that created the universe. Do you need evidence of this? Read further and I will show you the evidence. The English term word can mean a few different things. But when it is translated to Greek, it means logos. The word logos is defined as the source that controls the universe, the written word or inspiration of God, or a logic and rational argument. In ancient Greek philosophy, the word logos is defined as the controlling principle in the universe. Today, the concept of logos can be found in every religion, such as Christianity. To find the concept of logos in Christianity, all you need to do is read a certain verses of the Bible. In the King James Bible verse John 1 to 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word. The deeper meaning of the term Word is Logos, which is the source that controls the universe. In other words, in the beginning was the source. This is the source that created the forces of nature. Another word that you should know its deeper meaning is universe. The word universe is composed of two words which are union verse. The prefix uni originated from the Latin word unus, meaning one. As for the word verse, it means a line of poetry. Based on these two definitions, the word universe means one line of poetry. Point four a line of poetry usually has words that have allegorical and metaphorical meanings. To connect the dots, the hidden knowledge or information within the word universe tells us that the universe is an abstract reality field made of poetic and magical words slash logos slash forces. In other words, we live in a magical and poetic plane known as the universe, and therefore the supreme creator is the main author and we are the co-authors. Quantum physicists have done experiments proving that the universe is indeed an abstract or dreamlike reality field composed of energy forces. Another word that has a strong connection to the term word is the term light. Light is sometimes referred to as photon. In physics, a photon is usually indicated by the symbol comma which is the lowercase letter of the Greek symbol, gamma. 5. Some etymologists believe that the Greek word gamma is where the word grammar originated from. In English, grammar means the study of the classes of words, their inflections, and their functions and relations in the sentence. Grammar is the art of inventing symbols and combining them to express thought, logic is the art of thinking, and rhetoric is the art of communicating thought from one mind to another. The adaptation of language to circumstance. Six. The occult definitions of certain words in this section reveal that grammar or the way words are used has the potential to direct and control energy. Energy is also light and radiation. In the King James Bible verse Genesis 1 to 3 it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. In this verse, the Bible is telling you that God used words slash logos slash sound to manifest light. Keep in mind that the word light has a strong connection to the term word and grammar. In other words, the universe was created from light and word slash logos slash sound. In Greek, the word logos is defined as the source that controls the universe. The ancient Greek people believed that the powers, for example, sound of logos can be expressed through words and be used to create mystical things, for example, sacred geometry. Have you ever wondered why the symbols of corporations are called logos? It has to do with magic and sacred geometry. The process of using logos, for example, source, energy, force, and sound, to create things, such as sacred geometry can be seen in cymatics. Here is a quote from the New King James Bible verse Hebrews 4.12 that talks about how powerful words are, for the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any touched sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, 
and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. By now you should know how powerful words are. What most of us do not know about words is that they have hidden knowledge attached to them. The process of using words to hide certain knowledge was purposely done by the dark forces, groups of demonic thought form entities, to hide their true intentions and prevent us from knowing the secrets of the universe. It is one of their ways of hiding information in plain sight. One of the reasons why the dark forces hide information in plain sight is to prevent them from violating your free will. Another tool they like to use to tell you what they are doing to you in plain sight is movie. The Matrix is a great example of this. Many movies have images and words with occult meanings embedded in them to deceive you to give up your natural rights through silence. By being silent, you choose not to exercise your rights. The good news is that you cannot truly give up your natural rights for the reason that they will always be there, just like the laws of nature. For example, when you watch a movie about human trafficking or wars and do not say something to remove your consent, you unknowingly agree through silence, therefore, the dark forces did not really violate your free will. This is how the dark forces and the dark magicians can get away with most of their evil deeds. Ignorance is no excuse and silence implies consent. To be more accurate, being silent is known as implied consent. In the information and computer age, there is no excuse for not knowing these things, especially if you live in a country that has easy access to the internet. Because being silent is a form of consent, you need to be aware of what the dark forces are doing, so you can say no and remove your consent. Ignoring the dark forces is not going to help you remove your consent. If enough of us remove our consent, the dark forces and their minions would have to back off and leave us alone. If they were to not leave us alone and keep harassing us, they would violate our free will and would have to eventually face the consequences for their actions. All thoughts, intentions, and actions are known by the universe and there is no escaping the consequences of violating its laws. There are millions and possibly billions of people on earth who think they can achieve spiritual freedom or stop the crimes against humanity by ignoring what the dark forces and their new world order are doing. These people are living in a delusional world and are actually making it ten times easier for the dark forces to enslave humanity. If you want to prevent the dark forces from enslaving humanity, you need to first become aware of what they are doing, so you can say no to their actions and agendas and remove your consent. Remember, silence implies consent. How to decipher words to find their deeper meanings to find the deeper meanings and intent of words. You need to look beyond their common definitions, otherwise you will never know their deeper meanings. To find their deeper meanings, you need to look below their surface, dissect their layers and look at them closely from many different angles. This means that you may need to use an etymology dictionary to find their origins and rearrange their letters using the art of anagram. Once you find the origins of a word, dissect its layers, and look at it from many different angles, the true intent and meanings of the word magically become noticeable inside your mind. So, next time you look up a definition of a word, do not only look at it at face value, but also look at its origins prefix, and suffix. Furthermore, pay attention to other words that sound similar to the word you are investigating. A word that you may want to know its deeper meanings is baptism. When you look at the word baptism carefully and study its definitions to see what other words are related to it, you should eventually come to the conclusion that baptism is a dark magic spell. When someone is baptized, that person is considered to have entered into a covenant with the Lord. When you split the word covenant into two words, you get the term covenant. The word coven means an assembly of witches, especially a group of thirteen. The suffix definition of ant is causing or performing an action or existing in a certain condition. It can also mean serving in the capacity of. In Turkish, the word ant means oath. As for the word Lord, in English it means a person who has authority, control or power over others, a master, chief, or ruler. Here is one of dictionary.com's suffix definitions of ant, a suffix forming adjectives and nouns from verbs, occurring originally in French and Latin loan words, pleasant, constant, servant, and productive in English on this model, ant, has the general sense characterized by or serving in the capacity of that named by the stem, ascendant, pretendant, especially in the formation of nouns denoting human agents in legal actions or other formal procedures, tenant, 
defendant, applicant, contestant. Based on these occult definitions, the deeper meaning of the word baptism is to make an oath or a contract with a coven controlled by witches, lords. In other words, when a person is baptized, that person is serving in the capacity of a coven or is making an oath, contract with a coven, which is a group of witches, male or female, the group of witches who controls nearly all the churches in the world are the dark magicians. These magicians are the lords that people swear an oath to when they agree to be baptized. The word lord means a person who has authority, control, or power over others. The process of baptism actually promises the body, mind, and soul of a newborn child to the coven of a church, which is controlled by witches slash lords slash dark magicians from behind the scene. If you go to church, you may want to really think about that before agreeing to be baptized. Baptism is nothing more than a dark magic spell to trick parents to give up their baby's body, mind, and soul to the dark magicians and their demonic masters. Because you now know the real reason behind baptism, if you are thinking about baptizing your newborn, you may want to do more research on how magic spell works before doing so. Even better, just stay away from all churches because they are all controlled by the dark magicians to some degree, especially Roman Catholic churches. Churches or any religious institutions do not teach you how to achieve spiritual freedom. What they are good at doing is teaching you how to worship an external savior. When you worship an external savior, it disempowers you by weakening your spiritual powers. Furthermore, you are basically telling the Supreme Creator that it did not give you the necessary spiritual powers to empower you to achieve spiritual freedom. This is an insult to the Supreme Creator. Because of these things, religious institutions are great for teaching you how to be a coward and a good little slave. The Supreme Creator gave you its most precious gifts with no string attached. Some of these gifts are your natural rights and the power of thought consciousness, love, imagination, creativity, and awareness, which are the same spiritual powers that the Supreme Creator used to create the universe. These spiritual powers have infinite potential and therefore you also have infinite potential. By worshipping an external savior and relying on a religious institution to save you and not standing up for your natural rights, you are in a sense throwing the Supreme Creator's spiritual gifts in the trash and therefore are disrespecting yourself and at the same time disrespecting the Supreme Creator. In other words, you insult the Supreme Creator every time you worship an external savior. If you were the Supreme Creator, would you want to help a bunch of irresponsible people who keep insulting you? The Savior program is a psychological operation created by the dark forces to enslave your body, mind and soul and turn you into a cowardly slave to be used as a battery. The sooner you realize this, the sooner you can rise above their matrix and free your body, mind, and soul. You already have all the necessary spiritual powers to achieve spiritual freedom, so stop acting and thinking like a cowardly slave and take responsibility for your spiritual growth. Chapter 2 Word Magic the birthing process 3 commerce to know how word magic is used to enslave your body, mind, and soul. You need to know how words are used in the birthing process and commerce in order for the dark forces and the dark magicians to effectively enslave you at the physical and spiritual level. They need to trick you to agree to play the vampiric game called commerce. The best time to trick you to play this vampiric game is on the day of your birth. The words that are used for describing the birthing process are strongly related to commerce. For this reason, you need to know some information about merchants and the sea business or you will have a hard time seeing the connection between the birthing process and commerce. If you have studied the information in my second seminar, you should have little problem understanding the birthing process and commerce. The PDF file for this seminar is free to download. Before there were airplanes, automobiles, and trains, when people wanted to send products to people in other countries, they would often send them on a ship. Using ships to send goods to other countries became so important that many laws were created to protect merchants and their products. The two laws that dominated the sea business were Admiralty Law, the Law of the Sea, and Maritime Law, Law Merchant. Both of these laws originally heard cases involving commerce on the high seas. Eventually, these laws spread beyond the high seas and are now used in most court systems throughout the world. Today, nearly every courthouse in the United States of America, Canada, the United Kingdom, 
and certain Western and Eastern countries are operating under Admiralty law and Maritime law. When countries are operating under Admiralty and Maritime law, it means that their courts are operating under military law and commercial law, and therefore when people go to court, they are treated as properties and war criminals. This is why when people mention their common law or constitutional rights in Admiralty, Maritime courts, that is, U.S. courts, the judge may tell them to sit down and shut up. There is basically no justice in a court that operates under admiralty, maritime law. Let us turn our attention back to ships and merchants, so that I can explain to you how word magic is used to enslave your body, mind, and soul. When a ship reaches its destination, the captain orders his crew to prepare the ship to be docked. After the ship docks, the crew can start to unload the cargoes and products off the ship. A ship is also a vessel, so after a ship docks onto the shore, it is considered a birthed vessel. The word birthed is phonetically similar to the word birthed. These two words are spelled differently, but they sound very similar. This is one of the ways that word magic is used to deceive you. Before the crew can unload all the cargoes and products off the ship, birthed vessel and onto the dock, they have to first show a certificate of manifest to the dock operator or whoever is in charge of the dock. A certificate of manifest is a record that has information about the products, that is, the registration number, the country of origin, the manufacturer, etc. The certificate of manifest is basically your birth certificate. On your birth certificate, there is a registration number, country of origin, and manufacturer. Metaphorically speaking, the manufacturers that created you, the product, are your parents. The process of using ships to deliver products is where the word shipping comes from. Did you notice that the word shipping has the word ship in it? Another word that has the word ship in it is citizenship. When you split the word citizenship into two words, it transforms into the words citizenship, meaning a citizen of a ship. A citizen of a ship means that you are under the jurisdiction of admiralty law and maritime law. These two laws are not common laws or constitutional laws, instead, they are commercial laws. When a ship is in the process of being docked, it is being guided to come to berth. The word berth is defined as a space for a vessel to dock or anchor. Based on this information, when a product is unloaded onto the dock, it just went through the berthing process which is the process of delivering the product from the vessel, ship onto the dock. Phonetically, the word birth sounds like the word birth. This is why when a woman is in the process of giving birth, she is said to be delivering a baby. The birthing process of a baby is related to the process of delivering a product on a ship. Every woman has a body. Another word for body is vessel. A vessel can also be called a ship. The words body, vessel, and ship can all mean the same thing and be used to represent a woman's body. This is why a ship is often referred to as she and the main ship is often called the mother ship. To connect the dots, the process of a woman giving birth can also be defined as the process of delivering or birthing a product of a ship. Metaphorically speaking, the product is the baby and the ship is the woman's body. When you compare all the information that you just read about commerce and the sea business to the process of birthing a baby, you will see a strong connection between the birthing process of a ship and the birthing process of a baby. By spelling the words birth and birth slightly different and making them sound almost the same, the dark forces and their minions, the dark magicians, can trick you to agree to be a product of a ship, so that they can have jurisdiction over you. They know that they cannot have jurisdiction over the real you, the living, breathing person made of flesh and blood which is why they need you to consent to be an artificial person, so that they can treat you like a product and make money by selling you on the stock market. When you were in your mother's womb, you were surrounded in amniotic fluid, which was made of mostly water. In other words, you were living in a sea of water. Because you were living in water, according to Admiralty Law, the law of the sea, you could be ruled under this law. Admiralty Law is also known as the law of money. What is another word for money? currency. Phonetically, the word currency sounds similar to the term currency. Hence, the law known as the law of the sea, admiralty law. While living in your mother's womb, the thing that connects you to your mother is the umbilical cord, which is connected to your navel. Metaphorically speaking, you are connected to the mothership. The word umbilical is derived from the medieval Latin word umbilicalis, 
meaning of the navel. The word navel sounds similar to the word navy. The navy is the military of the sea. They did not name that area of your body the navel by accident. By now you should start to see how all these words are somehow directly or indirectly related to the sea. One very important thing you need to know about the word sea is that it has a strong connection to the word energy. By the end of chapter 5. You will know why these two words are strongly related. The evidence that babies are battery prisoners on average, a fetus lives in the womb of its mother for a little more than nine months before the fetus is ready to be birthed. When you were a fetus, you were living in water, amniotic fluid. Shortly after nine months, you were born from your mother's body slash vessel slash ship through her birth canal. The phrase birth canal sounds very similar to the phrase birth canal. A canal is an artificial waterway that is used by the captain of a ship or boat to birth his vessel. Hence, the phrase birth, birth canal. When you were born in the hospital, you had to travel through your mother's birth canal. After you came out of your mother's birth canal, you were grabbed by the doctor. The word doctor is pronounced similar to dock or. The word dock is defined as a platform extending from a shore over water, used to secure, protect, and provide access to a boat or ship. As for the word or, it is defined as a metal bearing mineral or rock, or a native metal, that can be mined at a profit. The word or also sounds similar to the word or, which is a long shaft with a broad blade at one end used as a lever for rowing or otherwise propelling or steering a boat. What you need to know about these words is that they all somehow indirectly or directly relate to a ship, the sea, and the process of giving birth. Another word you should know its deeper meanings is hospital. One of the origins of the word hospital is the old French word hospital, meaning hostel, shelter, lodging. In English, the word hostel sounds almost exactly like the word hostile. The word hostile means not friendly, warm, or generous, not hospitable. A hospital is not a friendly place to give birth to a baby, because the hidden role of the doctor, docor is to deliver the baby and turn the baby into a product of a ship, vessel to be sold in commerce using the birth certificate as the certificate of manifest. The birth certificate becomes a valid certificate after the parents and the doctor, docor sign it. Once the birth certificate is signed by all the parties, the information on it becomes a fact. This certificate is actually a birth certificate of a ship, also known as a certificate of manifest. In other words, shortly after you were born your parents unknowingly agreed to turn you into a product of a ship. Have you ever wondered why newborn babies are kept in the maternity ward? The reason why they are kept in the maternity ward is because their parents have signed their natural rights away to the state and therefore they have become products and prisoners of a ship. A ward is defined as a section in a prison. In prison, wards are used for caging prisoners. They are also known as prison cells. Why the word cell? Because prisoners are being used as batteries. The word cell is defined as a device that generates electrical energy from chemical energy, usually consisting of two different conducting substances placed in an electrolyte. To connect the dots, Babies are put in maternity wards to prepare them to become human batteries. Prisoners are caged in prison cells for the same reason. By the end of this book, you will know exactly what I mean when I say that humans are being used as batteries. Another thing you should know about the word hospital is that it has a strong connection to the secret society called the Knights Hospitas, which is one of the factions of the Knights Templar the private army for the Vatican. One of the symbols of the Knights Templar is the Red Cross. The Red Cross symbol can be found on the flag of the United Kingdom and inside of hospitals. The organizations called the American Red Cross, the British Red Cross, and the International Committee of the Red Cross also use this same symbol. All secret societies have symbols that they use to communicate. They operate somewhat like street gangs but are much more organized and powerful. Like street gangs, secret societies like to mark their territories with signs and symbols to let certain people know that they own those properties or territories. But unlike street gangs that only control a few blocks or a small town, secret societies control countries. All the Red Cross organizations are controlled by the Knights Templar. The United Kingdom is controlled by them too. Be aware that not every member of a secret society is a control addict. Furthermore, some secret societies do not support the enslavement of humanity. Let us turn our attention back to the word doctor, doc or. By now, 
you should know that the hidden role of the doctor, docor is to deliver the baby and turn the baby into a product of a ship, vessel to be sold in commerce using the birth certificate as the certificate of manifest. Metaphorically speaking, the word or in the word doctor, docor is you, the baby. You represent the orb because you are the battery that is being used as energy to power the matrix of the dark forces. So, when you were delivered from the body slash vessel slash ship onto the dock, you, the or, was delivered and put onto the dock. Hence, the word doctor, doc or. This is why the person who delivers babies in a hospital is called a doctor. The doctor apostrophe s slash docs, doc, role is to deliver the baby, or or dock the or onto the shore, so that it can be sold and used as energy. Seven. The word or also sounds similar to the first syllable of the word aura. Aura is an energy field that is part of the bioelectromagnetic field of a human being. When you split the word aura into two words, you get the term aura. The word o originated from the Latin word aurum, meaning gold. This is why in chemistry the symbol for gold is o. The word ra is the name of an ancient god called ra, pronounced ra. In Egyptian mythology, ra was the sun god that was often shown as a hawk. When you put the words sun and ra together, you get the word sun ra or sun ray, which is connected to the sun god ra. Every ship or body ship is brought into port and docked so that the doctor can deliver, deliver, the body ship, because it is a new liver being produced or a new baby being delivered by the doctor as doctor, the all that is now docked and ready to be sold and used as energy.8. The dark forces view each of us like an ore, because we are the ore that is being mined for gold, oh, through the process of mind control, the word mind sounds almost the same as the word mind giving us a clue as to why the Inunaki came here to earth.9 One of the main reasons why they came to earth was not to mine for gold but to mine for the gold in our minds, because to control our minds is to control the golden blood plasma in our bodies and the golden energy in our auras, which then can be used to extend their lifespans or charge their sun god Ra. Hence, the word aura, aura. In Greek mythology, the golden blood plasma is called Ica, a gold-colored fluid believed to be found in the blood of the alien gods, allowing them to live for thousands of years. It is my understanding that this golden blood plasma is found in very small amounts in the human body. However, during an ascension cycle, the human body can produce more of it. Certain spiritual teachers believe that the special element that gives golden blood plasma its longevity properties is organic monoatomic gold also known as organic white powder gold. Organic monoatomic gold can only be created by our bodies and nature. It is not the same as the synthetic monoatomic gold that is being sold as a dietary supplement. By now you should start to have a basic understanding of what the dark forces are doing to the human race. This evil agenda to enslave the human race and use human beings as batteries is what I like to refer to as the earth matrix drama. It is essential for you to know that at the deepest level the earth matrix drama is a spiritual drama for your soul and energy, so you better start paying attention. By the end of chapter 5, you will know why the dark forces need to feed on the energy of humanity to survive. Let us turn our attention back to the birthing process, so that I can teach you how the dark forces are using the birth certificate contract to enslave your soul and body. In the USA, shortly after you are born, a certificate of manifest is created with certain personal information about you written on it. This manifest is known as your certificate of live birth, which is not the same as your birth certificate. Shortly after your parents signed your certificate of live birth, the certificate was sent to the US government. After the US government registered it and finished doing whatever they needed to do to your certificate of live birth, they sent you a new version of your certificate of live birth which is known as your birth certificate. Your new birth certificate is not the original certificate of live birth, because it is actually a death certificate. The term birth certificate sounds similar to the term birth certificate. This was deliberately done to trick you using the art of phonics, which is a method of teaching reading and spelling based upon the phonetic interpretation of ordinary spelling. Phonetically, there is almost no difference between the terms birth certificate and birth certificate because they sound nearly identical. When the US government created your birth certificate, their intention was to trick your parents to sign your natural rights away and turn you into a product of a ship, vessel to be sold in commerce. Therefore, a birth, 
Birth certificate is a certificate of manifest for a product birthed from a ship. When the US government sent your parents your birth certificate, what they were really doing was informing your parents that you are now a registered product of the United States, Incorporated. This is why they trade your birth certificate on the stock market. Have you ever wondered why they like to use the word parents to describe your mother and father? The word parents sounds similar to the words parents which means the pair that rents point one zero when your parents, parents, signed your birth, birth certificate, they unknowingly agreed to allow the US government to partially own you and make you a product of the United States, incorporated, what this means is that your body and everything you buy or produce using the name on your birth certificate is legally the property of the US government, however, your parents, Parents are allowed to keep or rent you as long as they pay taxes and take decent care of the new product slash baby slash you. The name on your birth certificate is a legal name, and therefore it represents an artificial person that only exists on paper. In other words, it is a name of a dead thing. This legal name is often written in all capital letters and is not the name given to you by your parents. Instead it is a forgery name created by the government to trick you to do business with its agencies. To be more specific, your real name is an appellation. Only things have names. Furthermore, living and breathing people have autographs not signatures. A signature is used by a corporate officer to do business with a corporation. Because your birth certificate is marked with a legal name, it is a certificate that represents the birth of a dead thing and therefore it is a death certificate. The legal name is sometimes referred to as the straw man. This is what the lawyers, bankers, and politicians have used to enslave you. It is a crime known as personage. By arbitrarily creating an estate trust named after you and claiming to own this thing they created, they have falsely claimed to own you and your assets and to literally buy and sell you on stock exchanges, ship you out of port, and tax you for doing things you've never done. After all, there is no law against enslaving an estate trust is there, or arresting a slave, or charging a tax on importing revenue to Puerto Rico question mark 11 because your birth certificate has a forgery name and does not come with full disclosure, it is a fraudulent contract, there is no statute of limitation for fraud and fraud vitiates all contracts linked to that fraud, even though your birth certificate is a fraudulent contract, proving this fraud in court is not easy, one of the best solutions for freeing your soul and body from the birth certificate death certificate, is to remove false presumptions made by the government. A great website that teaches you how to do this is privatist.me. If you have studied my second seminar on natural law, you should know that when the US government refers to the United States of America, most of the time they are talking about the corporation called the United States, Incorporated or the United States of America, minor. Nearly 99% of the time, the US government writes the name United States in all capital letters and nearly 100% of the time they write it without the incorporated, so that they can trick you to agree to be an employee of the United States, incorporated. As for the name of the actual country, landmass, it is legally called the Continental United States or the United States of America, major. In legalese, the United States is not the same as the country known as the continental United States. Knowing this fact is very essential for comprehending the fraud of the legal system and how the British monarchy and the New World Order NWO, have successfully enslaved the American people without their knowledge. The United States, Incorporated, also doing business as the United States of America, Incorporated, is actually a foreign corporation that resides in Washington DC which is also a foreign corporation. Why do you think the United States has a president and a vice president? Corporate law requires a corporation, such as the United States to have a president and a vice president. It is right in your face and hidden in plain sight. The acronym DC stands for the District of Columbia, which is a 10 mile radius district. This district houses the United States, incorporated. So, when the US government talks about the United States, incorporated, they are referring to a corporation located in the District of Columbia, a foreign district. In other words, they are not really talking about the country. Washington DC is a foreign district for the reason that it is not part of the continental United States.
the landmass, just like Vatican City is not part of Italy, Washington DC or the District of Columbia was founded by a powerful Masonic secret society called the Columbians. Hence, the name District of Columbia. The Columbians also founded Columbia Broadcasting System, CBS, Columbia Pictures, and Columbia University. 12. Did you notice how similar the words Columbians and Columbia are? One thing you should know about Columbia University is that it is located in New York, a state founded by the York Wright, which is also another powerful Masonic secret society. This is why it is called New York which means the new state of the York right. Are you starting to see how words are used to deceive you? Because you now know that there are two main versions of the United States of America and that the corporate version is the one the US government likes to use the most. Let us dig deeper into the birthing process, so you can learn how the dark forces and their minions apply word play and word magic to trick you to temporarily give up your natural rights. Before the invention of computers, when babies were born, hospitals would publish their birth information in the newspaper. Nowadays, because of computers, the internet and certain laws, hospitals rarely publish birth information in newspaper. Instead, birth information is sent to the government and then they publish it on certain government-sponsored websites. Some examples of these websites are vital records websites. In the USA, shortly after a baby is born, the doctor extracts blood from the bottom of the baby's foot. This process is sometimes called the heel stick test. The bottom of the foot is known as the sole of the foot. Keep in mind that the word soul sounds very similar to the word soul. Most doctors do not know the real reason behind this procedure, so if your parents ask them why they do this, they will most likely tell your parents that they extract your blood to test it for genetic conditions and diseases. Besides extracting your blood, they also take tissue samples and blood from your mother's placenta. The purpose of taking your blood is to extract your DNA from it. Shortly after extracting blood from the sole of your foot, the blood is sent to the government, so that they can sequence your DNA to determine your genetic blueprint. Your genetic blueprint is like your fingerprint because no one else has that same genetic blueprint. Because of this, your DNA is the physical proof of evidence that the government can use to identify you. Shortly after the government is done sequencing your DNA and creating your personal file, they publish your birth information on some of the websites that they sponsored. What they are basically doing is telling the public that they found parts of you and someone needs to claim them. It is like a lost and found service. If no one claims them after a certain amount of time, usually seven years, the government has the legal right to pronounce you as legally dead. The problem with this process is that the government did not tell your parents that they need to claim those parts of you, and therefore the government is basically committing fraud. Fraud vitiates everything. But does the government really care about that? Not really for the reason that they make millions of dollars off of you from this fraud. Be aware that when the government announces you as being legally dead, it does not always mean that you, the living human being, are dead. In the legal system, you can be alive and still be named legally dead. Being legally dead means that your fictional character, for example, legal name, is dead. The legal system operates in a jurisdiction that deals with fictional things. This is why the laws of the legal system are called acts and statutes, just like the acts and statues in a play. Because of this, nearly everything it does is unlawful. After reading this book, you will know why the legal system is a big fat fraud. Under Admiralty law, if you are missing for seven years, you can be declared legally dead. This is why people lost at sea are declared legally dead after seven years. In the USA, our political and court system are operating under Admiralty and Maritime law. Both of these laws deal with commerce on the sea. To connect the dots, when the government announces you as being legally dead, what they are really saying is that you are dead at sea. They say this because you are mostly made of water and you were born from a sack of water, the amniotic sack. Because you are legally dead and the government owns your legal name, the government can legally claim your estate. This process is similar to when people die and their estates are transferred to the people listed on their wills. This is why the government can legally seize your properties and children when you violate their acts and statutes. However, if you rebut their presumption and let them know that you are not dead, 
it makes it much harder for the government to confiscate your properties. When you send a letter to the government to let them know that you are not dead at sea but is alive and well, you are correcting your status and removing yourself from their jurisdiction, which is an imaginary territory that operates in a dead fictional world. After you correct your status, the government now has to acknowledge you as a living man, male or female, instead of a dead person, legal person. A dead person, also known as a legal person or legal fiction, has no natural rights, only privileges. An example of a legal person, legal fiction is a United States citizen, because United States citizens are legal persons with only privileges, according to the legal system, they have no natural rights. This is why when you go to court and shout out to the judge about your natural rights or constitutional rights, the judge will look at you like you are a fool and may tell you to sit down and shut up, because the legal person, for example, United States citizen, legal name, and corporation, is a dead thing, the government has jurisdiction over it. On the other hand, the human being is a living, breathing man, and therefore has natural rights, which are unalienable rights given inherently to the man by the supreme creator. The word unalienable means incapable of being aliened, that is, sold and transferred. In other words, your natural rights are superior to all laws made by the government and cannot be sold, and therefore the government does not have jurisdiction over you, the living man, male or female. Why the word government means to rule their mind if you did not skip any chapters of this book, by now you should have seen the word government dozens of times. The word government will be used many more times in this book so it would be wise for you to know the deeper meanings of this word. The common and overt definition of the word government is the form or system of rule by which a state, community, etc., is governed. Here is one of the legal definitions of the word government, the system of polity in a state, that form of fundamental rules and principles by which a nation or state is governed, or by which individual members of a body politic care to regulate their social actions, a constitution either written or unwritten, by which the rights and duties of citizens and public officers are prescribed and defined, as a monarchical government, a republican government, etc. The word government originated from the old French word government, meaning control, direction, administration. To find the occult definitions of the word government, you need to split it into two words, transforming the word government into government. One of the origins of the word govern is the Latin word governare, which translates to English as to direct, rule, guide, govern. The suffix ment has a few different origins. One of them comes from the Latin word ment, meaning mind. Based on the occult definitions in the previous paragraph, the word government means to rule the mind or govern the mind. Throughout history, Governments throughout the world have always used mind control techniques, such as subliminal messages and propaganda to condition us how to think. The purpose of this is to control how we think, so that they can rule our minds. One of the most popular and effective mind control techniques that the government like to use to rule our minds is mnemonic. The adjective definition of the word mnemonic is assisting or intended to assist the memory. As a for the noun definition, mnemonic means something intended to assist the memory, as a verse or formula. The word mnemonic originated from the Greek word mnemonikos, meaning of or pertaining to memory. Based on these definitions, mnemonic is something that affects the memory. Mnemonic is used in many different media, such as video games, TV commercials, cell phone apps, computers and movies. The techniques used in mnemonic can be used for good or evil purposes. Unfortunately, most mnemonics of today are used to program our minds in negative ways and control how we think to a large degree. One of the most popular media outlets used for broadcasting mnemonics is television, TV, a medium used for casting magic spells. Have you ever wondered why TV shows are sometimes called TV programs? They are called TV programs because they are using them to program your mind with mnemonics and subliminal messages. They did not call them TV programs for no reason. Mnemonics are effective for manipulating your mind because they utilize sacred geometry, sigil, sound, 
and light to create magic effects to control your thought patterns. Because of their effectiveness, many corporations are replacing conventional subliminal messages with mnemonics in their advertising campaigns. One very important thing you need to know about the government is that it is a corporation. According to Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition, a corporation is an artificial person. Because the government is a corporation, artificial person, it is a fictitious entity that has no natural rights and power. Its main source of power comes from feeding on the energy of the people. Because the government needs the people's energy to have power, it has no power without the support of the people. Unfortunately, most people have been brainwashed to think that the government has power over them. Whenever the government becomes tyrannical, all we need to do is remove our support and it will collapse on its own. This is how we can stop tyrannical governments without violent revolutions. Another misconception most of us have about the government is the idea that the agents of the government have authority over us. Remember, the main source of power for the government is the energy of the people. Without us, the government has no real power and therefore its agents also has no authority to tell us what to do. One of the groups that makes up the government is the police force. The government agents that make up the police force are sometimes called cops. Today, cops are not really here to protect and serve the people. Instead, they exist for the main purpose of serving and protecting the dark magicians and their minions. The dark magicians often consider cops to be the lowest pawns of the government. The word cop is derived from the Latin word capere, which means to take. Some etymologists believe it originated from the Middle French word caper, meaning seize, to take. As a noun, dictionary.com defines the word cop as a police officer or a person who seeks to regulate a specified behavior, activity, practice, etc. As a verb, it defines cop as to catch nab or to steal, filch or to buy, narcotics. To comprehend why the word cop is used to describe the lowest pawns of the government, you need to find the hidden meanings of the word cop. Furthermore, you need to know the difference between the words lawful and legal. I will go into more details about the difference between these two words in the next chapter. For now, the important thing you need to know about the words lawful and legal is that lawful is more about natural rights, God-given rights and legal is more about rights given to you by man or the government, because the word lawful deals with natural rights, anything that is lawful is above anything that is legal, for example, when cops pull you over for speeding and give you a speeding ticket, they are operating under legal status and not lawful status, in other words, they are unlawfully giving you a ticket. The reason why it is unlawful for cops to give you a speeding ticket is because it violates your natural right to travel. However, if you have a driver's license and or your vehicle is registered with the government, cops can pull you over for speeding without having to worry too much about violating your natural rights. Your driver's license or license plate is evidence that you have a contract with the government and therefore it puts you under the jurisdiction of the government and its agents. Your right to travel is protected by natural law, a body of spiritual laws. It is a natural right given inherently to you by the Supreme Creator. Because of this, no human being, government agent, or government agency can tell you to stop traveling or how to travel without your consent. If they were to force you to stop traveling without your consent, they would be in direct violation of natural law. To overcome the problem of violating your natural right to travel, the dark magicians invented the driver's license, which is a contract designed to trick you to give them your consent. When you sign your name on the driver's license contract, you agree to allow the government and its agents to have jurisdiction over you when you are driving a vehicle. This is why cops are trained to always ask you for your driver's license. Once you give them your driver's license, they have the legal right to give you a ticket, unless you did not violate any traffic laws. Once you know cops are in violation of your natural rights whenever they force you to do anything without your consent, you should know that the hidden meaning of the word cop is a government agent whose main role is to catch people and steal their money using unlawful citations. The more citations cops give out, the more money their employer, the government, can collect. Do you remember what I said earlier about the definition of the word cop? As a verb, the word cop is defined as to catch, nab or to steal, filch or to buy, 
narcotics. This definition of the word cop describes pretty accurate what many cops are doing to us these days. The process of using unlawful citations to steal our money is not only practiced by cops. Many government agents, for example, IRS agents, whether they realize it or not, are also using unlawful citations to steal our money to finance the systems of the new world order. By now you should be aware that the government is an artificial person. For this reason, the government cannot directly deal with a living man. To overcome this problem, the people in control of the government, which are the dark magicians of the new world order, NWO, created another artificial person. This artificial person is known as the legal name, which is the name on your birth certificate driver's license, etc. To rule our minds and control us, the dark magicians use their government to trick us to consent to play the legal name game. By participating in the legal name game, we unknowingly agree to be a corporation, artificial person. This allows the government to do business with us and have jurisdiction over us. Furthermore, the legal name game makes it easier for the government to enslave us in the matrix of the dark forces. Do you comprehend now why the word government means to rule the mind? There is a spiritual side to the earth matrix drama, so if you do not know who you really are and your natural rights and how the universe works, you will have a very hard time freeing yourself from the matrix of the dark forces. Another essential thing you need to know is the power of natural law a group of spiritual laws that governs the dynamics of the universe. One of the most important natural law is the law of free will. Chapter 3 The Legal Name Game The legal name game is one of the greatest con games that the dark forces invented to enslave your soul. The dark magicians of the New World Order, NWO, which are the minions of the dark forces, like to use the legal name to trick you to agree to unknowingly give your natural rights away to them. Once you do this, everything that you have purchased or owned under that legal name legally belongs to their government, in other words, your kids, cars, house, land, and anything that you have purchased or owned using your legal name legally belong to their government. The good news is that the dark magicians did not create the legal name game in a lawful way and therefore they have no lawful standing. If you want to learn how to defend your rights effectively, you need to know the difference between the word legal and lawful. It is crucial to define the difference between legal and lawful. The generic constitution references genuine law. The present civil authorities and their courts use the word legal. Is there a difference in the meanings? The following is quoted from a Dictionary of Law 1893, lawful. In accordance with the law of the land, according to the law, permitted, sanctioned, or justified by law. Lawful properly implies a thing conformable to or enjoined by law, legal, a thing in the form or after the manner of law or binding by law. A writ or warrant issuing from any court under color of law, is a legal process however defective, see legal, bold emphasis added, legal, Latin legalis, pertaining to the understanding, the exposition, the administration, the science and the practice of law, as, the legal profession, legal advice, legal blanks, newspaper, implied or imputed in law, opposed to actual legal looks more to the letter, form slash appearance, and lawful to the spirit, substance slash content, of the law. Legal is more appropriate for conformity to positive rules of law, lawful for accord with ethical principle. Legal imports rather that the forms, appearances, of law are observed, that the proceeding is correct in method, that rules prescribed have been obeyed, lawful that the right is actful in substance, that moral quality is secured. Legal is the antithesis of equitable, and the equivalent of constructive. To Abbott's Law Dick. 24. Bold emphasis added 13 in simple terms, something that is lawful is superior than something that is legal. If something is legal, it does not necessarily mean that it is lawful. For example, killing someone intentionally is unlawful but can be legal. Lawful is about natural rights and legal deals with rights given by man or the government. According to the 1893 Dictionary of Arts and Sciences, and General Literature, the RSP 9th Encyclopedia Britannica, the word legal means the undoing of God's law. In the legal system, many legal terms are used to trick you to agree to be a legal person, which is an artificial person, also known as a corporation. A corporation, artificial person, 
is a dead entity that has no natural rights. By tricking you to consent to be a legal person, the dark magicians and their agents of the legal system can legally claim that you have no natural rights, unless you rebut their claim. In other words, the legal system is designed to trick you to temporarily give up your natural rights which are the inherent rights given to you by the Supreme Creator. The process of tricking you to give up your natural rights is the undoing of God's law. This is the deeper meaning of why the word legal means the undoing of God's law. Be aware that when I say God, I am talking about the Supreme Creator, the source of creation, and therefore I am not talking about the ancient gods or the dark lords worshipped by certain secret societies. The legal name is not the name given to you by your parents. Instead. It is a forgery name created by the government to trick you to do business with it. To be more specific, your real name is an appellation. Only things of names. Furthermore, living and breathing people have autographs, not signatures. A signature is used by a corporate officer to do business with a corporation. In other words, your legal name is the corporate name that the government uses to attach you to a dead fictional character so that the government can identify you and do business with you. Because of this, if you want to successfully free yourself from the dark forces and their dead matrix system, you need to stop thinking that the legal name is who you are. Names and legal names are not real people made of flesh and blood. Instead, they are symbols of things, non-beings. In legal terms, names are artificial persons which are corporations. Because corporations are artificial persons, they can be pretty much anything. For example, in general, religious institutions, banks, names, and the government are all corporations for the reason that they are fictitious entities. I will say this again, your name or legal name is not who you really are, because you are a nameless spiritual being living in a body of man, male or female. It is essential that you get this fact through your head or you will have a very hard time freeing yourself from the earth matrix drama. Once you become aware of the legal name fraud and comprehend it, you should feel the magic spell of the legal name slowly losing its effect, causing you to wake up and becoming more aware of who you really are. Some spiritual teachers have said that the legal name is the mark of the beast. In my opinion, the mark of the beast can mean a few different things associated with the mark of spiritual slavery. The legal name is one of them, which is why they always tell you to sign your name on contracts. A word that has a strong connection to the legal name or the mark of the beast is signature. The word signature is defined as a person's name, or a mark representing it, as signed personally or by deputy, as in subscribing a letter or other document or any unique, distinguishing aspect, feature or mark. Every time you sign your name, signature on a commercial contract, you agree to play the game of commerce, which is a game of battery invented by the dark forces to enslave your body, mind, and soul. In other words, the act of signing your name on a commercial contract is the process of marking yourself with one of the mark of the beasts. In the legal system, when a person's name is written in all lowercase, that is, John Quincy Adams, it is usually referring to a natural and living person. Furthermore, when a person is described as John Quincy of the House Adams, it is referring to a natural and living person. When a name is not written like the previous two examples, 99% of the time it is referring to an artificial person, also known as a corporation. It is important to know that in the legal system the word person can mean many things, such as a corporation, legal name, legal person, artificial person, or natural person. Nearly 99% of the time when you receive a letter or document from a bank, court, or government agency, your name is written in all capital letters. This all caps name tells lawyers, attorneys, and judges that it is a legal name of a corporation or a dead man's estate. If the legal name is written in all capital letters and the letters are italicized, it is the name of a ship. Here are some examples of how the name can be written in various ways. The following information is based on the US legal system. Even though it is based on the US legal system, it should also apply to English speaking countries that are controlled by the Western legal system. John Quincy Adams equals a living American endowed with all his natural rights. John Quincy Adams equals a foreign city used trust used in commercial shipping. John Quincy Adams equals a foreign estate trust. John Q. Adams equals a public transmitting utility company. John Q. Adams equals a public foundation. John Q.
Adams equals a cooperative John Quincy Adams equals a boat or ship used in public commerce, according to the book titled You Know Something Is Wrong When An American Affidavit of Probable Cause, this name is supposed to be italicized, John Quincy Adams, John Quincy Adams equals a Commonwealth Trust J. Quincy Adams equals a slave owned by Exxon Corporation JQ. Adams equals a foreign pauper forbidden to own land Adams, John Q. equals a taxpayer Adams, John Q. equals a soldier Adams, John Q. equals a slave There are dozens of different potential meanings that can be arbitrarily assigned to anyone's name and used to represent radically different entities. In a verbal conversation we can talk all day long about someone or something named John Quincy Adams and which John Quincy Adams or what kind of John Quincy Adams will never be known, except from the context of the conversation but on paper the use of such a system instantly defines what or whom is being talked about, if you know the system. 14. Shortly after you were born, your parents, parents gave you a name, they gave you or you a name because you are going to be a good little sheep for the dark magicians. 15. Did you know that the word you is defined as a female sheep and is pronounced similar to the word you? The dark magicians like to call you, you are sheep or sheeple, because sheep are some of the dumbest animals on the planet and they are great at following orders. The word sheeple is defined as people compared to sheep in being docile, foolish, or easily led. It is derived from the combination of the two words sheep and people. Why did your parents, parents give you, you a name? Because the word name sounds like name, which is a sound that a horse likes to make. Besides calling you a sheep, the dark magicians also like to call you a horse because a horse is phonetically whores. If you think this is just a coincidence, you have no idea how deep the horse connection goes. Read further and I will show you why it is not a coincidence. When a couple have relationship problems and are constantly arguing, they are sometimes described as nagging each other. A nag is an old, inferior, or worthless horse. If they argue and nag at each other for too long, their voices may eventually sound horse.16 phonetically. The word horse sounds similar to the word horse. Maybe the relationship is not stable because the groom did not bony up enough courage to get a good job, or maybe they could not afford a baby crib. 17 The word crib is simply an English synonym for pony. As for the word groom, it is defined as a man or boy in charge of horses or the stable. The word stable means a building for the lodging and feeding of horses, cattle, etc. in horse racing. The word stable means an establishment where racehorses are kept and trained. As human beings, we are being trained and groomed by the dark forces and their minions to become the horse slash whores of Babylon, the ancient capital city of Babylonia. Today, many of the dark teachings and philosophies of certain secret societies can be traced back to Babylon. The word Babylon originated from the Greek version of Akkadian Babylonia meaning the gate of the gods. Be aware that they are not talking about the supreme creator or the gods that live in the center of the Milky Way galaxy, instead, they are talking about the alien gods. Let us turn our attention back to the horse connection. One of the major reasons why a couple argues is for the reason that they do not know how to manage their time. Etymologically, the word manage is derived from the Italian word mangia, which means to handle especially to control a horse.18 another term that is related to horse's ponytail. Sometimes a man does not like it when his woman puts her hair in a ponytail. This may sound silly but some men do get angry at their women for putting their hair in a ponytail too much. Furthermore, women who do not have nice bangs can be a turn off for some men. Bangs usually do not cause too many relationship issues, so they should not be the main problem. Oh. I know, maybe the man does not like to bang his woman anymore. When the German word pony is translated into English, it means bang, bangs, fringe. In English, the word pony is defined as a horse of any small type or breed. Do you still think the horse, horse connection is just a coincidence? We have barely scratched the surface of the horse connection. The legal name and commerce in commerce, when you see a name written in all capital letters, it is a corporate name or a legal name, which is a corporation. The legal name plays a significant role in your life, because it is used by the government as a conduit or a liaison, so that it can do business with you, the natural living person. This is why whenever the government, bank, 
or any corporation sends you a document with your legal name on it, 99% of the time it is written in all capital letters. The process that allows the government to legally claim you as a corporate entity involves the creation of a fictional character, and then tricking you to consent to be that fictional character, which is the artificial person or legal name. This legal name was created shortly after you were born and was recorded on a bond. This bond that represents the date of your birth is known as your birth certificate. The word bond is legally defined as a contract by special to pay a certain sum of money, being a deed or instrument under seal, by which the maker or obliger promises, and thereto binds himself, his heirs, executors, and administrators, to pay a designated sum of money to another, usually with a clause to the effect that upon performance of a certain condition, as to pay another and smaller sum, the obligation shall be void. To connect the dots, the birth certificate bond is a financial contract created to enslave your body, mind, and soul, so that they can use you as collateral for the debt of the government. Anyone who has a birth certificate has been physically and spiritually enslaved by the dark forces. Unfortunately, most people are unaware of this fraud. Because of this, they have little chance of freeing themselves from the birth certificate bond. This certificate is a magic contract, therefore, it not only bonds you at the physical level but also at the spiritual level. Have you ever wondered why birth certificates have seals on them? These seals are sigils. The word sigil is derived from the Latin word sigilla, meaning seal. Keep in mind that each alphabet of the language system is also a sigil. The word sigil is defined as a sign, word, or device held to have occult power in astrology or magic. Words are sigils because the letters that make up words were created using sacred geometry and sacred science. Let us turn our attention back to the legal name. Shortly after you were born, the government gave you a legal name that looked nearly identical to the name given to you by your parents. Your legal name, which is used by the government to do business with you, the body of water or liquid is written in all capital letters because it is a piece of liquidated capital or capital.19 in other words, your legal name has been securitized and turned into a financial instrument to seal your body, so it can be sold in commerce, hence, the term liquidated capital, to liquidate something is to sell it off entirely, or sell it to pay off a debt. This process of liquidating something to make money is called liquidated capital. Why is that you may ask? Because you, the person who has been securitized, were born in the womb of your mother, which was mostly made of water, liquid. You are also mostly made of water. Because you are mostly made of liquid and have been securitized, you are considered liquidated capital. The word capital comes from the Latin word capitalis, meaning of the head. Hence capital, chief, first. It also comes from another Latin word caput, which translates to English as head. When you really study the occult definitions in the previous few paragraphs, you should come to the conclusion that the process of turning you into capital money or liquidated capital is their way of saying that you have a bounty on your head. Your birth certificate is the bond with your legal name written on it in all capital letters, and therefore it is the financial document, security that has the value of the bounty on your head. This is why your birth certificate is traded on the stock market. In the western world and many eastern countries, people are born with a bounty on their heads due to the fact that their government considers them as enemies of the state. According to Judge Dale, author of The Great American Adventure, The Secrets of America, if you live in the USA, the act that makes you an enemy of the US government is the Trading with the Enemy Act. Even though the corporate US government considers you, US citizen, as an enemy of the state, it actually has no jurisdiction over you as a man with a body made of flesh and blood. However, if you agree to be a United States citizen, then the US government has jurisdiction over you. The good news is that the US government only has jurisdiction over you when you are acting in the capacity of a United States citizen. For example, if you have a driver's license, the only time when the police has jurisdiction over you is when you are driving a vehicle registered to the state. By driving a registered vehicle, you are acting in the capacity of a government agent. In other words, the US government only has jurisdiction over you when you are using your driver's license or any government issued ID or contract with the legal name. The reason why the US government has jurisdiction over United States citizens is due to the fact that they are considered artificial persons, 
corporations, and therefore they have no natural rights. Furthermore, United States citizens are considered employees of the United States, incorporated, and thus are bound to the acts and statutes, rules and codes, of the corporation. If you want proof that the United States is a corporation, look at subsections 15 and 15a in title 28 U.S. Code section 3002 and you should see this sentence, United States means, a, a federal corporation. The act that legally created a corporate version of the United States of America was the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871. Unlike the country United States of America, which is a republic and is written with a lowercase u in the word united, the United States of America, incorporated as a democracy. Shortly after the Great Depression of the 1930s, the United States of America, incorporated changed its name to the United States, incorporated. However, it is common for the United States, incorporated to do business as the United States of America, incorporated. In a society where the people are ignorant and irresponsible, democracy is one of the worst forms of government. The word democracy comes from the Greek word demos, which means common people. A group of common people can also be called a mob. One of the origins of the word crazy is the Latin word crasia, meaning power, might, rule, sway, power over, a power, authority. Based on these occult definitions, democracy means mob rule. In a democracy, the voting power of the majority overrules the rights of the minority. For example, if a person were on trial for not believing in God and 51% of the people in the room vote that he should be hung, that person would be hung for not believing in God. In a republic, that person's free will and natural rights would be protected. Do you understand now why democracy means mob rule? This is why in a society where the people are ignorant and irresponsible, democracy is one of the worst forms of government. Today, most people in the USA and throughout the world are ignorant and irresponsible, which is why it is easy for the dark magicians of the new world order to enslave them under their democratic government. Do you understand now why the US government is always talking about spreading democracy throughout the world? Democracy is just another form of communism except that the people have the privilege to vote. However, their votes do not really matter because the voting system is rigged. Keep in mind that a privilege is not a natural right, and therefore it can be taken away by the government. How the voting system is used to drain your energy this spring, 2016, many Americans are watching the 2016 presidential debate, so they can make an informed decision to vote for the candidate that they believe is the best to lead their country. What most Americans do not realize is that the presidential debate is a play, and therefore all presidential candidates are actors auditioning for an acting job of a corporation called the United States. May the best actor win. After being hired, the new president is assigned to more acting lessons, so he or she can become one of the best professional actors and liars that money can buy. The dark magicians like presidents who are professional actors and liars, because they can easily fool the American people to support the United States, incorporated, and help expand its franchise around the world. The word franchise means the right or license granted by a company to an individual or group to market its products or services in a specific territory. But did you know that the word franchise can also mean the right to vote? Like any corporate employee, when a presidential candidate wins an election and is sworn into office, he or she becomes an employee of the United States, a federal corporation. Do you remember what I said earlier about Title 28 U.S. Code Section 3002? Under Title 28 U.S. Code Section 3002 subsections 15 and 15a, United States means, a, a federal corporation. It is right in their so-called laws which are not laws but are acts and statutes. Hence, the play called the presidential debate. The presidential debate is a play because it has presidential candidates, actors standing behind a podium like statues as they are worshipped like idols by naive citizens. The word idol is defined as an image or other material object representing a deity to which religious worship is addressed. Today, the US government is the new god or deity for Americans and their new religion is democracy. As an employee of the United States, incorporated, the president has to follow the rules and codes, acts and statutes, 
of the United States or the president will be fired. Unlike a traditional employee, the president can only be fired by his or her board of directors, also known as the Congress. By now you should start to see how the offices of the United States are structured like a corporation, which is why the United States has a president and vice president, and a few secretary offices. One of its departments is even called U.S. Department of Human Resources. Because the United States is a corporation, it also has shareholders, which are the leaders of the New World Order. Most, if not all, of these leaders practice the art of dark magic, which is why I like to call them the dark magicians or the controllers. Some people like to refer to them as the elite, the cabal, or the international banksters. Because the United States has shareholders, its top priority is to make sure its shareholders are happy. The most profitable business for the United States is war which is why it has been constantly at war with other countries. Read this informative article titled America has been at war 93% of the time, 222 out of 239 years, since 1776 and you will know what I mean. All of these unlawful wars are engineered or partially planned by the controllers of the new world order to make money and spread tyranny around the world, because the people controlling the United States, incorporated like to engineer unlawful wars and the president is their main actor, anyone who goes to a US presidential debate or votes for a presidential candidate is pretty much spitting on the graves of the people who died fighting or standing up for freedom. What a disgrace to humanity, life, truth, and freedom. Worst of all, what a disgrace to the supreme creator. One important thing you need to know about the United States, incorporated is that its flag, which is the flag with the 50 stars and 13 stripes made of the color red and white, does not represent the country called the United States of America. Instead, it represents the corporation known as the United States, incorporated, usually written in all capital letters, United States. Another important thing you need to know about the flag of the United States, incorporated is that when its border has a gold fringe, it represents the US military flag of war. This flag deals with martial law, territorial law, and admiralty, maritime law. When you see the gold fringe US flag in a government building, for example, courtroom, it means that common law rights and the constitution are suspended or void, and therefore the building is operating under military and commercial law. The US military flag of war, which is the US flag with the gold fringe on its border, was traditionally flown over U.S. military buildings only during wartime. Today, this flag is seen in nearly every court in the USA and in the offices of U.S. politicians. In other words, Americans are living under a less severe form of martial law. If you have a flag of the United States, incorporated in your home or yard, you might want to remove it and throw it away. This flag does not really represent freedom because it is the flag of the United States, incorporated a corporation controlled by the New World Order, NWO. The NWO is a secret organization controlled by mostly Western secret societies. Its main goal is to enslave the human race under a fascist and Nazi type one world government. Because the flag with the 50 stars and red and white stripes is the flag of the United States, incorporated. If you are the type of people who likes to protest against the US government, do not bring that flag with you to the protest. If you were to bring it with you and wave it around like it represents freedom, you would be making a fool of yourself. It is like going to a protest against the Nazi while at the same time wearing a pro-Nazi shirt and carrying a Nazi flag. One thing you should know about protests is that they do not create real positive change, so it is best to avoid them. When you protest, you are basically telling the government that you want change, but you want the government to do it for you. In other words, you are still an incompetent baby who is not responsible enough yet to be free from the control of the government. Once you know that US presidential candidates are actors auditioning for a corporate job of the United States, incorporated, you should know why it is pointless to vote for these candidates. The US voting system is a big fat scam anyways, so you are just wasting your time when you go vote at the voting booth. The truth is, as a United States citizen, you do not have the right to vote. In legal terms, your right to vote is actually a privilege because to be a United States citizen means that you are a legal person, also known as a corporation. 
Do you need evidence of this? According to Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition, a corporation is an artificial person or legal entity created by or under the authority of the laws of a state. An artificial person, legal person is considered a dead entity, because it does not exist in the real world. Because a corporation is an artificial person, it has no natural rights, such as the right to vote, the right to speak, and the right to make choices. So, when US politicians tell you that you have the right to vote as a United States citizen, they are already lying to you. Every time you vote for a US politician to represent you in office, you consent to be governed by treasonous politicians. Nearly all of these politicians do not care about you for the reason that they work for the dark magicians and their new world order. NWO. All US politicians working in Washington DC have sworn and solemn oath to the NWO, and therefore their allegiance is to the British monarchy, the Crown Temple and the Vatican, and not to the American people. The right to vote in the United States is a big fat fraud, because your vote does not really matter and the voting system is rigged somewhat like a casino. Furthermore when you vote, you are not voting for a president of a country but for a president of a foreign corporation known as the United States, Incorporated, also doing business as the United States of America, Incorporated. One thing you need to know about the US voting system is that the presidential candidates are chosen by the dark magicians of the New World Order and they control both of the Republican and Democratic parties. The idea that we have choices when it comes to electing US presidential candidates is an illusion. As an American, when you vote, you are basically committing to reason against the country called the United States of America, which is made up of 50 separate states operating as a nation on the land jurisdiction. The United States, Incorporated is operating under the international jurisdiction of the sea, which is based on admiralty law, the law of the sea. This law deals with commerce and therefore is sometimes known as the law of money. If you really want to know what you are doing when you vote, you need to study the occult definitions of the word vote. At the deeper level, the process of voting is a religious ritual created by the dark forces to drain your energy and enslave your body, mind, and soul. Do you need evidence of this? Read further and I will show you the evidence. The word vote is defined as a formal expression of opinion or choice, either positive or negative, made by an individual or body of individuals or the means by which such expression is made, as a ballot ticket, etc. These two definitions of the word vote only show you the overt meanings of the word vote. To find the occult meanings of the word vote, you need to use the art of phonics to help you see the relation among words. Phonetically, the word vote sounds nearly identical to the word volt. Where do voters go vote? Volt at. They go to a voting booth or a polling, polling booth. The word poll sounds similar to the word poll which is defined as either of the two regions or parts of an electric battery, magnet, or the like, that exhibits electrical or magnetic polarity. In other words, a pole is the electric battery pole of positive, plus, or negative. This is why when you go vote, you go to the polls, polls, so that you can place your vote, vote on the candidate that you want to see put in charge. Twenty. Once the votes, volts are counted. The politician or politician that receives the most votes, volts is the candidate that will be elected into the position of power. Maybe this is why it is called power politics. Every time you vote, you consent to give your electrical energy to the dark forces, so that they can use it to power their corporations slash corpses and new world order. It is all about tricking you to give up your life force energy. The presidential election is a sick and evil con game created by the dark forces to con you to agree to be a human battery, so that they can drain your life force energy to power their dead matrix and corporations. This is why before they can summon you to go to court, they need to charge you first. Just like charging a battery before its energy is drained to power electronic devices. By now you should know that your legal name is a name of a corporation, which is why 99% of the time it is written in all capital letters. It is important to know that even when your name is not written in all capital letters, it could still represent a corporation. Once you comprehend this process. You should know that your legal name is often written in all capital letters because it has been incorporated and securitized, so it can be used in commerce. Another reason why your legal name is often written in all capital letters on government contracts, for example, birth certificate, 
is because capital letters are more effective for creating magic spells. Your birth certificate is not just a record of birth, it is also a spiritual contract that is sealed with dark magic. This is why there are sigils, seals, on your birth certificate. Your parents' signatures are also sigils, seals and therefore on the day they signed your birth certificate, their actions spiritually sealed or bonded you to the birth certificate contract. When you split the word signature into two words, it transforms into signature. The prefix sig is defined as right, mark, label. As for the word nature, one of its origins is the Latin word natura, which literally means birth. It can also mean course of things, natural character, constitution, quality the universe. Based on these occult definitions, when your parents signed their signatures on your birth certificate that has your name on it, they marked you with sigils and therefore spiritually and magically bonded you to the birth certificate contract. By doing this, they also signed your natural rights away to the state, making you a property of the government. Unfortunately, your parents most likely did not know this for the reason that they lack the knowledge to understand magic. The signature and legal name are two of the marks of the beast. Chapter 4 The Dark Secrets of the Education 3 Religious System There is a very dark and evil side to the education process. If you are not aware of it by now, you already have been enslaved by it. Fortunately, there are ways to free yourself from the evil side of the education process. By the end of this book, you will know how to not only free yourself from the education system, but also free your mind and soul from the dead matrix of the dark forces. In USA, most of us start school around the age of four or five. The first class that is used to school us to be good little sheep, sheeple is kindergarten. The word kindergarten originated from two German words kinder, and garten. When translate to English, kinder means children and garten means garden. Therefore, Kindergarten literally means a garden of children. In English, the word garden means a plot of ground, usually near a house, where flowers, shrubs, vegetables, fruits, or herbs are cultivated. Now, ask yourself this question and think about it for a minute. Why would the dark magicians of the New World Order, NWO, name the first official class of elementary school kindergarten, Garden of Children? To comprehend why they did this, we need to turn our attention to the story of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden and investigate the occult meanings of this story. According to the Bible, shortly after God created the heavens and the earth, he also created a garden and a man named Adam. This man was given dominion over the plants and animals in this garden, which was called the Garden of Eden. Shortly after creating Adam, God used one of Adam's rib to create a woman named Eve to be Adam's companion. Before I reveal some very controversial information about Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden, I need to show you the Bible verse Genesis 1:26 from the New King James Bible. This verse is important for helping you comprehend the occult meanings of the story of Adam and Eve. Here is the Bible verse Genesis 1:26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Did you notice that the first seven words that God said was let us make man in our image? In this verse, the Bible is talking about more than one God. This is why the verse has the word us and our in it. When the Bible talks about God, it is not always talking about the Supreme Creator. In Genesis 1:26. The Bible could be talking about the alien gods that came from outer space. It has been mentioned by some biblical scholars that the early version of the Bible verse Genesis 1:26 was changed from then Elohim said, Let us make man in our image to then God said, Let us make man in our image. The word Elohim is a plural noun and is a Hebrew word that when translate to English, it means gods. In Hebrew, the singular noun for God is the word Elo according to Bill Donahue. The word Elohim means the divine male and female. From studying ancient records, many researchers of ancient civilizations concluded that these alien gods visited Earth thousands of years ago. One of the alien races was called the Anunnaki. During the ancient times, some of these alien races were worshipped as gods. Even today, 
many secret societies still worship these alien gods. Is it true that intelligent extraterrestrial beings have visited Earth? Based on my research, I can confidently say that there are some truths to this claim. Be aware that there is also a lot of false information in the public domain about extraterrestrial life. The alien gods were said to come from the stars. One of the stars is called Sirius. The word Sirius is related to the Latin word Siri, which translates to English as Sirius, Greater Dog Star. Some ufologists believed that the Greys came from the Sirius star system, while others believed they came from Zeta Reticuli. The Latin word for Grey is Canis. This Latin word sounds very similar to the Latin word Canis, meaning dog or dog star. The Latin word Canis is related to the constellation Canis Major which means the greater dog in Latin. Canis Major represents the bigger dog following the constellation Orion, which is known as the mythical hunter. Certain ancient civilizations believed that the stars were the physical manifestation of the different states of God. Hence, the term star god or sun god. When you spell the word god backwards, you get the word dog. Put the word dog in front of the word star and you get the term dog star. The information in the previous paragraph tells us that the word god has a strong connection to the word dog and Sirius, the star system where many of the ancient alien gods came from. This is why I sometimes do not like to use the word god to describe the supreme creator. When I do use the word god to describe the supreme creator, I often write it with a capital G to let people know that I am talking about the Supreme Creator. If you have studied the information in my third seminar, you should know that the Bible is a religious book full of metaphors, allegories, codes, symbols, esoteric anagrams, and parables. Because of these things, if you do not know how to decipher the codes in the Bible, you are not acquiring truthful information but are reading deceptive information. This is why the sentences in the Bible are called verses. The word verse is defined as a single metrical line in a poetic composition, one line of poetry. One of the things about a poem is that it often has metaphors in it. If the information in the previous paragraph is hard for you to accept, Look at the Bible verse Matthew 13 colon 34 35 and you will find evidence showing that the Bible has parables. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables, he did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Because you now know that the Bible is a religious book full of parables, let us turn our attention back to Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden. When the Bible refers to Adam, it is not always referring to a man. In Genesis of the Bible, the character Adam is a metaphor for the first atom, atomic particle. Adam is phonetically Adam. Adam, Adam represents both male and female, because every male or female is made of atoms. The name Adam, Hebrew, was linked with the triliteral root, ADM, meaning red or the red earth clod. It is related to the words, Adam, red, Admoni, ruddy, and dam, blood. This is where we get the name Adam, meaning the red man, and also Adam, meaning the sardius, ruby, or red jewel. The meaning of Adam is, such particles as a source of nuclear energy, the power of the atom. The atom is a basic unit of matter that consists of a dense central nucleus surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons. In a previous article, The Science of 666, I had explained that the number 666 relates to the carbon atom and man. Carbon-12 is one of the five elements that make up the human DNA, being composed of six protons, six electrons and six neutrons which equates to 666. Carbon-12 is the most abundant of the two stable isotopes of the element carbon, accounting for 98.89% of carbon.21 Here is another way to decipher the hidden codes behind the biblical story of Adam and Eve. This method uses the art of cryptography to decipher the codes of the Bible, revealing another occult meaning of the story of Adam and Eve. Achromatic ciphers, as you know, are cryptograms about various letters of a sacred alphabet. In the achromatic cipher, the creation myths of the world are achromatic cryptograms, and the deities of the various pantheons are only cryptic characters which, if properly understood, become the constituents of a divine alphabet. The initiated few comprehend the true nature of this alphabet, but the uninitiated many worship the letters of it as gods. 
thus in Adam and Eve. The proper achromatic transposition is to take the letter M and divide it into its constituent components, as thus, M equals IVI this represents a divisian, which means double, D, vision. Here we deal again in duality, or male, female, in the case of M equals IV, we reorder the IV to reveal 7, or the word 7. The 7 is then ciphered further as V equals V equals EV2 equals Pi equals ADM equals 1413 equals 3.141 EV then is the number 666 and thus the letter M divides into 7 and then further into 7 and then further into SN equals 3.14 EV equals 666, and so forth. The letter M, therefore, is the primary cryptic letter, a chromatic cipher, to the Edmund Eve story, which further illuminates the core numbers of Bayan 666, each central to the Illuminatus philosophy. 22. The Garden of Eden is the garden where the alien gods created life using genetic engineering techniques. According to the book titled The Cosmic Code by Zechariah Sitchin, one of the alien races known as the Inunaki came to Earth roughly 445,000 years ago. According to certain researchers of Zechariah Sitchin's work, the Inunaki was one of the first alien races to tinker with the early humans' DNA. They also believed that the Inunaki combined some of their DNA with some of the human test subjects' DNA and were able to successfully create a new human hybrid race. This new human race eventually evolved to the humans of today. The idea that alien gods played a role in creating modern humans may sound crazy. However, in the last few decades, geneticists have discovered that the human DNA contains foreign DNA that may not be from Earth. This could explain the famous missing link in human evolution. Some researchers of these alien gods suggested that human beings were also used as a food source. This makes me wonder if the Garden of Eden is actually the Garden of Eden.23 Besides, what else would they use a garden for? To grow food to eat, right? If this were the case, then Earth would be the Garden of Eden. Is there evidence proving that human beings are being used as food? I have not found irrefutable proof that human beings are being used as food, so I do not know if it is true. However, I have found some evidence that points toward this direction and I do know that human beings are being used as batteries. After you read chapter 5, you will know what I mean when I say that we human beings are being used as batteries. One of the things you need to know about the dark forces, groups of demons, and the dark magicians is that they like to tell you what they are doing to you or are planning to do to you in movies and TV shows. They also like to use video games, music videos, and other popular media to tell you their future plans for humanity. In the movie Jupiter Ascending, there is a scene where Titus shows Jupiter a room full of thousands of vials that contain youth serums. By drinking the youth serums, it allows Titus and his race to live for thousands of years. What was shocking about the serums was that each one of them was made from harvesting nearly 100 dead humans. Could this be the ichor or golden blood plasma that the Greeks used to talk about? The golden blood plasma, which is believed by some researchers of occultism to have organic monoatomic gold in it, could be one of the main reasons why the dark forces and the dark magicians have been promoting the idea that alien gods will come save us, or that the rapture event will take certain people back to God. Keep in mind that when a religion refers to God, it is not always talking about the supreme creator. Many times, it is referring to the alien gods from outer space. The word rapture is connected to the Latin word raptus, which means a carrying off, abduction, snatching away rape. Therefore, the deeper meaning of the word rapture is snatching or abduction. Christians who believe that they will be raptured to heaven have been deceived by the dark forces. Every time people die, their souls are raptured, abducted to heaven. This heaven is not the heaven where enlightened beings live. Instead, it is another control system of the matrix used by the dark forces to trick naive and cowardly souls to go back into their reincarnation program which is a program designed to prevent souls from leaving the matrix. The rapture program is another savior program created by the dark forces to keep us living in a state of victim consciousness, so that they can weaken our spiritual powers, allowing them to enslave our bodies, minds, 
and souls. The good news is that they can only rapture or abduct us with our consent. If the evil alien gods are after our golden blood plasma, then the ascension process that we are currently going through would be the best time to trick us to agree to be harvested from the Garden of Eden slash Eatin. They need to trick us because they need our consent. If they were to take us by force, they would violate the law of free will. To overcome the problem of violating our free will, the dark forces like to use spiritual contracts to trick us to give up some of the power of our free will. If you have signed a spiritual contract or agreed to participate in a religious contract, for example, baptism, you can void certain parts of it at the spiritual level by saying that the contract is now null and void, and that the Supreme Creator is the witness to your claim. Keep in mind that the birth certificate is also a spiritual contract. In addition, you need to remove presumptions and correct your status by letting the government know that you are not a legal person. Two great websites that teach you how to do these things are privatist.me and Curtis Richard size. If the human body can produce more organic monoatomic gold during ascension cycles, it would make sense for the alien gods of the dark forces to hijack certain levels of the ascension process. This will make it easier for them to trick us to agree to go with them. Maybe this is why ascension is sometimes called the harvest, as stated in the book titled The Raw Material. A word that gives us a clue to back up the harvesting of humans is the word fetus. Phonetically, the word fetus sounds similar to the term fetus. After the fetus, fetus is born. The fetus is officially a baby. When pronounced out loud, the word baby sounds like baby. The word bay is defined as a body of water partially enclosed by land but with a wide mouth, affording access to the sea. Because you are made of water, you are like the bay. As for the word bee, it is a name for identifying flying insects that are known for producing honey. Based on the previous two definitions, the word baby, baby means a body of water that produces honey. Combine water and honey and you get the golden blood plasma that the alien gods need for longevity. More babies mean more golden blood plasma or honey for the alien gods. Why do you think a couple in a relationship call each other honey or baby? Because every human or baby slash fetus slash fetus has golden blood plasma or honey inside him or her. To connect the dots, when you are old enough to go to kindergarten, garden of children, you, the baby, baby are put into a shelter for housing a colony, also known as a hive. This shelter is used to school you to be a good little slave, so that when you grow up to be an adult, you are ready to work like a honeybee and produce golden blood plasma for the alien gods of the dark forces. The word colony sounds similar to cull honey. In legal terms, colony means a union of citizens or subjects who have left their country to people another, and remain subject to the mother country. The word cull is defined as to reduce or control the size of, as a herd, by removal, as by hunting, of especially weaker animals, also, to hunt or kill, animals, as a means of population control. As for the word hive, it is defined as a shelter constructed for housing a colony of honeybees. Based on these occult definitions, the pubic school system is a colony, cull honey for schooling kids to become good little sheep so that when the time comes, they can be culled for their golden blood plasma or honey. A colony or cull honey is also a great mind control system to hive off people or break people away from their larger groups for the purpose of population control. Have you ever heard of the Georgia Guidestones? The Georgia Guidestones has a message that says, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Whoever is behind this message wants the population of humanity to be reduced to 500 million people. This means that over 90% of the human population would have to die. Some people refer to this depopulation event as the great culling. Have you ever wondered why there are so many toxic chemicals in food, water, vaccine, and medicine? It may be related to the great culling in kindergarten. One of the first things they teach you is the alphabet, which is made of letters created by using sacred geometry. These letters are ideograms which are written symbols that represent ideas. One important thing you need to know about all written symbols is that they are created into existence from the egg, the dot, and the serpent, the line. The egg and the serpent are important symbols in the teachings of secret society. After they teach you how to write the letters of the alphabet, 
They also teach you how to spell words correctly. The hidden agenda of teaching you the alphabet and how to spell words correctly is to prepare you for the day you can cast magic spells through the use of spelling. Another reason why they teach you how to spell words correctly is to make sure that each letter, geometry, is arranged the same way every time you write something. This will help strengthen the magic effects of certain words. Did you notice the term magic spell and the word spelling have the word spell in them? This was done by design. It is right in your face and hidden in plain sight. The hidden intent of spelling is to cast magic spells. Do you remember those spelling bee contests in middle school? The spelling programs of the education system are schooling children slash babies slash babies to be good spellers. Hence the term spelling bee. Besides teaching you how to spell, you are also taught how to say the alphabet correctly using specific sounds. This process is important for creating the right sound for each letter of the alphabet, which is essential for casting magic spells. The sound of each letter of the alphabet was created based on sacred sound. When you combine the letters of the alphabet and transform them into words and speak the words out loud. You are not just uttering words but are also casting your thoughts and vibrations into Earth's magnetic field or magic field, which is the energy field that creates the reality of Earth. If you are not careful and say certain words together, you can actually cast a spell without even knowing it. Most of us do not know how magic works because we lack the knowledge to comprehend energy mechanics and sacred geometry. Because of this. We have no idea what we are doing when we yell harsh words at one another using swear words or curse words. They did not call them curse words for no reason. Are you starting to see how all these words are related to magic and energy? Why do you think most parents tell their kids to stop cursing when they swear too much? Even at a subconscious level, we intuitively know that it is not good to use curse words too much. When you shout curse words at people. You are casting dark magic spells on them. Due to the power of the law of attraction, those magic spells can also be reflected back onto you. This is why you should be careful of the words you use when you yell at someone. After learning how to spell words correctly, they teach you how to cast those spellings, spellings into sentences and phrases without teaching you about the magic effects of spelling. The purpose of this is to prevent you from knowing the true intention and power of words so that the dark magicians can control your mind using magic spells. Their magic spells can not control 100% of your mind, but they do affect your mind more than you may realize. It is similar to how subliminal messages can affect your subconscious to a large degree. Subliminal messages are a form of magic spells. By now you should know what I mean when I said in the beginning of this book that nearly every word in the English language is carefully designed and put together by the minions of the dark magicians to trick you to play their con game. Most other languages are also created for this purpose. The magic power of words is the main reason why words are so effective for deceiving and enslaving you. Do you understand now why words are more powerful than swords? Words are powerful but they are not as powerful as your thought consciousness, awareness, and spiritual energy. Words can be used to create magic spells to control your mind, but if you become aware of their powers and how they are being used to control you, they cannot affect your mind as much. For example, when traditional magicians do magic tricks, they can fool you to believe that their tricks are real, but if you figure out how their tricks are done, you can no longer be fooled for the reason that you know their tricks are illusions. In other words, you have become aware of how their tricks work and therefore they cannot deceive you anymore. Other ways to protect your mind from magic spells are by overcoming your fears and increasing your frequency. These things can be achieved through the right knowledge and experiencing that knowledge into wisdom. The way magic tricks work is similar to how the dark magicians use real magic spells to control your mind. Once you become aware of how the dark magicians use magic spells to control you, their magic spells lose their effects. Your awareness is one of the most powerful spiritual powers that you have. Learn how to use it wisely and the dark magicians will not be able to control and deceive you using the art of magic. Chapter 5 How the Legal 3 Commerce System Drain Your Energy In the Western legal system, when you go to court for a trial, you are not really going to court but are going to a game arena where they are planning to con you using word play, legal words, and word tricks. Where do you go when you want to play basketball, volleyball, 
or tennis with your friends. You go to a basketball, volleyball, or tennis court. Therefore, a court is where you go to when you want to play a game. They did not name the place where you go to trial a courtroom by accident. This is why the judge is sometimes referred to as the administrator. The judge is there to administer or manage the rules of the game in the court, game arena which is why the judge sits behind the bench. The word bench is defined as a seat occupied by an official, especially a judge or the seat on which the players of a team sit during a game while not playing. Another role of the judge is to act as a banker, because he or she is administering a commercial court. It is about commerce and not justice. One of the words judges and attorneys like to use to trick you to give up your natural rights in court is contract. The word contract originated from the old French word contract and the Latin word contractus, meaning a contract, agreement. Contract is a very powerful tool for the reason that it can be used to trick you to give up some of the power of your free will. It can also be used to bind you to certain terms and conditions and therefore limiting your choices and demanding you to do something to satisfy those terms and conditions. Most of us know that a contract is an agreement between at least two parties. This definition of contract only shows you the overt meaning. To find the cover or occult meaning of the word contract, you need to look below its surface, dissect its layers, find its origins, and look at it from many different angles. This means that you may need to use an etymology dictionary to find the origins of the word contract, and split and rearrange its letters using the art of anagram. One of the first steps to finding the deeper meaning of the word contract is to separate it into two words. When you split the word contract into two words, you get the term contract. As a verb, the word con is defined as to swindle, trick. As a noun, the word tract is defined as a brief treatise or pamphlet for general distribution, usually on a religious or political topic. When you put the definition of the words con and tract together, it translates into a deceptive treatise or a treatise of trickery. This is one of the deeper meanings of the word contract. Every time you sign a contract with a corporation, for example, bank and government agency, you agree to a deceptive treatise. The good news is that nearly all contracts you made with corporations and government agencies are fraudulent, because they do not come with full disclosure. For a contract to be valid, it needs to have an agreement with mutual understanding, competent parties, and full disclosure of material facts. Another word judges and attorneys like to use to deceive you in court is the word understand. When you go to court and the judge asks you the question do you understand the charges? You should think twice before answering the question. If you were to answer yes, you would basically admit to the court that it has jurisdiction over you. When you split the word understand into two words, you get the term understand. To find the occult meaning of the term understand you need to switch the words under and stand around. When you do this, the phrase understand becomes stand under. By saying to the judge that you understand the charges, you are also telling the judge that you stand under the charges. One of the most common words they like to use to trick you in court is the word person. The word person is a general word for the reason that it can mean a legal person, a natural person, a corporation a name, or any fictitious entity. Most of the time when the judge asks you for your name, he is asking for your legal name, which is a legal person. A legal person can also be a corporation. A corporation is a corpo ration or corpso ration. The plural form of the word corporation can be written as cor, phonetically. The word cor sounds similar to the word corpse, which is defined as a dead body usually of a human being. The legal system sees you as a corpse to be used as a ration to feed the matrix of the dark forces. Hence, the word corporation slash corporation slash corpso ration. Do you remember what I said in chapter 2 about why the government sees you as a legally dead person, because you are considered lost at sea or dead at sea? Another very important thing you need to know about the legal system is that nearly all of its courts are operating under admiralty, maritime law. These courts deal with fictional characters, for example, legal person and corporation, which is why the laws of these courts are called acts and statutes. As a verb, the word act is defined as to perform as an actor. The so-called authorities of the court system are actors acting in a play known as the legal system. Whether they realize it or not, 
they are still just actors playing a game to con you, even though it is just a game, it is a very serious game because you could end up in jail. The court and legal system have to operate as a game, because they are dealing with fictional things. Because of this, when you get a summons letter to appear in court, the court is not summoning you, the body made of flesh and blood. Instead, it is summoning the legal person or the legal name which is the fictitious entity used by the government to do business with you. The legal person, legal name, corporation is a fictitious entity, because it only exists on paper and in our minds, just like the government. However, if you agree to act in the capacity of the legal person, you basically are telling the court that you want to be in the play, game called the legal system. This is why the legal system is all based on presumption when it is dealing with the government and the legal person. When you are in court, you are not just in a game arena to play legal games, but are also in a room to play magic games. This is why the judge is also called the magistrate and the letter that the court used to notify you to appear in court is called a summons. What do witches do when they want to call spirits to appear in front of them? They summon them. They did not call this letter a summons for no reason. Do you need more evidence that courtrooms are places for casting magic spells? Read further and I will show you all the evidence you need. Have you ever wondered why nearly all court documents have seals on them? The reason why they have seals is because seals are sigils used for real magic rituals. Have you also ever wondered why a judge is called a magistrate? Judges are magistrates because they are religious priests dressed in a black robe. In legal terms, the word magistrate is defined as any individual who has the power of a public civil officer or inferior judicial officer, such as a justice of the peace. Magistrate can also be defined as a civil officer charged with the administration of the law. Phonetically, the word magistrate sounds very similar to magistrate or magi straight. One of the origins of the word magi is the Latin word magi, plural of magus, meaning magician, learned magician. As for the word straight, it means a narrow passage of water connecting two large bodies of water. The word straight has a strong connection to the word canal. Do you remember what I said in chapter 2 about the relation between the birth canal and the birth canal? Sometimes you have to pay attention to the phonics of a word to find its hidden meanings. Because judges are magistrates slash magistrates, their hidden role is to administer your body slash ship slash vessel to port and cast magic spells on you. One important thing you should know about the word magistrate is that it is also used to describe presidents and governors. The President of the United States is the chief magistrate of this nation, the governors are the chief magistrates of their respective states. Point two four. At the deeper level, a courtroom of the legal system is like a shiproom, storage space on a ship. It is a shiproom because nearly every court of the legal system is operating under admiralty law, the law of the sea. The body slash vessel slash product in the courtroom, ship room is you. The legal system sees you as a product and not a living person, which is why there is little or no justice in nearly every court throughout most western countries and many eastern countries. Courts are also banks which is why they have benches and bars. One of the origins of the word bench is derived from the old high German word bank, meaning bench. In English, the word bank can mean a few different things. One of its meanings is an institution for receiving, lending, exchanging, and safeguarding money and, in some cases, issuing notes and transacting other financial business. The word bank can also mean a bench for oars in a galley or a row or tier of oars or the sloping side of any hollow in the ground, as when bordering a river. Hence, the word river bank. The word galley is defined as a seagoing vessel propelled mainly by oars, used in ancient and medieval times, sometimes with the aid of sails. Back in the old days, galleys were often rowed by slaves or convicts. Do you remember what I said in chapter 2 about the relation between the word or and the word or? In chapter 2, I said that the word or means a metal bearing mineral or rock. I also said that it sounds similar to the word or, which is a long shaft with a broad blade at one end, used as a lever for rowing or otherwise propelling or steering a boat. Be aware that most of the words in bold font in the previous five paragraphs are somehow related to water. Why water? Because it has to do with admiralty law, the law of the sea, 
and commerce, even the word font is related to water. The word font means a receptacle for baptismal water. I can go on for pages about how all these words are related to water, but I think you should get the point by now. In one of the previous paragraphs, I said that galleys were often rowed by slaves or convicts. The word convict is often used in the legal system to identify people who have been found guilty of a crime and is serving a sentence in prison. What most of us do not know about the word convict is that there is a deeper meaning to this word. Its deeper meaning is used by the dark forces and their minions to mock people who were in prison or are serving a sentence in prison. Most of us are aware of the overt definition of the word convict which is a person proved or declared guilty of an offense. This definition only defines the word convict at the surface level. To find the deeper meaning of the word convict, you need to split it into two words, convict, and then switch them around. When you do this, the words transform into victcon. The prefix vict is derived from the Latin root word vict meaning conquer. It is related to the root word vinc. This is where we get the word victim from. The definition of the word victim is a person who is deceived or cheated, as by his or her own emotions or ignorance, by the dishonesty of others, or by some impersonal agency or a person or animal sacrificed or regarded as sacrificed. To connect the dots, a convict slash convict slash vict con is a victim of a con who has been conquered, deceived, and sacrificed due to his or her ignorance. This is the cover or occult definition of the word convict. So, what is the con? The con is the legal system. Convicts are victims of the con known as the legal system, which is a system created by the minions of the dark forces to con people to give their natural rights and spiritual powers away to the dead. The legal system is a big fat fraud because it is based on presumption and is run by a bunch of criminals who are using it to con people to pay them money. Most convicts are not really criminals for the reason that they have been conned by the real criminals, which are the people in charge of the legal system. The real criminals mock the victims of their legal system by calling them convicts. Let us turn our attention back to the court and legal system. In a courtroom there is a section called a bar. Here is an excerpt from wikipedia.org explaining what a bar is. The origin of the term bar is from the barring furniture dividing a medieval European courtroom, similar to the origin of the term bank for the bench-like location of financial transactions in medieval Europe. In the USA, Europe and many other countries referring to the law traditions of Europe, the area in front of the barrage is restricted to participants in the trial, the judge or judges, other court officials, the jury, if any, the lawyers for each party, the parties to the case, and witnesses giving testimony. The area behind the bar is open to the public. 1. This restriction is enforced in nearly all courts. In most courts, the bar is represented by a physical partition, a railing or barrier that serves as a bar. 2. As a defendant or plaintiff, you are required to stay behind the bar, a barrier or barrier, of the courtroom. Only attorneys, judges and certain court officials are allowed to go past the bar. Why is that you may ask? Because the court sees you as a prisoner. Where do they lock up prisoners? In a jail or prison cell. What is a jail or prison cell made of? Iron or steel bars and barred doors. Nearly all courts operating under the Western legal systems are admiralty courts enforcing military laws, and therefore when you go to court, you are treated as a war criminal. This is why you have to stay behind the bar in a courtroom. It is right in your face and hidden in plain sight. Another definition of the word bar is an ingot lump, or wedge of gold or silver. This definition shows another relation between the word court and bank. The word bar can also mean a counter or place where beverages, especially liquors, or light meals are served to customers. Have you ever heard someone say, let's go drink at the bar? One of the words that you should pay attention to in the previous paragraph is the word liquor. The word liquor is derived from the old French word liquor, meaning fluid, liquid, sap, oil. It is also derived from the Latin word liquor m, nominative liquor, meaning liquidity, fluidity, or a liquid, the sea. The English dictionary defines the word liquor as a distilled or spirituous beverage, as brandy or whiskey, as distinguished from a fermented beverage, as wine or beer. Did you notice that all the words in bold font in the previous two paragraphs are also related to water or the sea? Even their definitions are related to water. By the end of this chapter, 
you will know why water plays such an important role in commerce. In addition, you will know why the word sea has a strong connection to the word energy. Let us focus our attention back to the hidden roles of judges. Have you ever wondered why judges wear a black robe? The black robe uniform is the symbol for representing a priest who works for the Jesuits or has a connection to the Jesuit order. The black robe uniform also represents a worshipper of the ancient god Saturn. During the ancient times, Saturn was associated with the god of law and justice. Today, Many secret societies still worship Saturn as the god of law and justice. According to Jordan Maxwell, the symbol that was used in the religious context for Saturn was the square and its symbolic color was black. 25 This is why judges wear a black robe. It is their way of showing respect to Saturn, the god of law and justice. Whether judges realize it or not, they are religious priests who have been brainwashed by the dark forces to cast dark magic spells on people when they are in a courtroom. Do you understand now why judges wear a black robe? Besides judges, priests also wear a uniform similar to a black robe, which is known as a cassock. The word cassock is defined as a long, close-fitting garment worn by members of the clergy or others participating in church services, or an ankle-length garment, usually black worn by priests and choristers. Whether priests realize it or not, they are acting in the capacity of witches, and therefore are working for the dark forces to enslave people at the spiritual level. Because of this, when priests are preaching the knowledge of God to people in church, they are actually casting magic spells on them, just like how judges slash magistrates slash magistrates cast magic spells on people in court. Because judges are religious priests, there is no separation of church and state. Furthermore, nearly all churches are incorporated and therefore they belong to the state. So, where do attorneys fit into this magic and black robe cult? Attorneys are also like witches because they are using the power of words to cast magic spells on people. However, they do not have as much power as judges. One thing you need to know about western attorneys is that nearly all of them work for the crown temple and therefore are Templar agents. One way to tell if attorneys are Templar agents is to ask them if they are a member of the Bar Association. Whether Bar attorneys realize it or not, they are committing crimes in the USA, Canada, Australia, and other countries under the guise, appearance, and color of law. Bar attorneys work for the same secret organizations, the Crown of England and the Crown Temple, that tried to enslave the American people in the 1700s. These two secret organizations were heavily involved in the killing of Americans during the American War of Independence. Today, the Crown of England and the Crown Temple still have the same dark agendas. Unfortunately, they have already taken over the court and political system of the USA over 100 years ago. These two secret organizations are controlled by the Vatican which is the religious center of the dark forces. People who work for the legal system are unknowingly or knowingly abetting fraud. This system is run by a bunch of criminals working for the Crown of England, the Crown Temple, and the Vatican. Because of this, nearly all judges and bar attorneys are traitors to the human race, and therefore judges do not deserve to be called your honor. Even though nearly all judges and bar attorneys are traitors to the human race, there are some judges and attorneys who are working for the legal system, because they want to learn how it really works, so that they can teach people how to free themselves from the vampiric system of slavery known as the legal system. By now you should know that the legal system is saturated with dark magic. You should also know why judges of the western legal system and priests of churches are acting in the capacity of witches, which is why their hidden role is to summon people to come to their courts or chapels so that they can cast magic spells on them. Be aware that magic can be used for good or evil purposes. Why commerce is a game of battery for draining your energy at the deepest level, the commerce game created by the dark forces to enslave humanity is a very sick and evil game. However, if you learn how this game really works and know a good percentage of its hidden rules, you can find ways to prevent the dark forces from enslaving the human race. The main purpose of the commerce game is to con and trick you to temporarily give up your energy, natural rights, and spiritual powers. This is why before they can summon you to go to court, they need to charge you first. When it comes to the legal and commerce system, the words charge, battery, 
and currency play a very big role for powering the commerce game of the dark forces and keeping it alive. In legal terms, when someone gets beaten up, that person is often referred to as a victim of battery. If the victim knows who committed the crime and presses charges, the person who did the battery will be summoned to go to court to face the charges. In business, when a company outsells or outperforms its competitors, one of the common words used to describe this process is the word beat.26 when the suffixing is added to the word beat, it changes to the word beating. Hence, company A is beating company B in sales. The game of business or commerce is a game of battery, and therefore one business team or many business teams will eventually get beaten by the winner. Sports are also games of battery. In baseball, the combination of the pitcher and the catcher is called the battery. This can be proven by looking at one of the definitions of the word battery, which is the pitcher and catcher considered as a unit. Have you ever heard someone said batter up in baseball? Add the letter Y to the word batter in the term batter up and you get the phrase battery up. 27 The word battery is an important word in commerce and law, because it plays an important role in the process of harnessing the energy of humanity. In other words, this is one of the many methods that the dark forces like to use to drain our living energy. After collecting our energy using magic spells, the dark magicians and their masters, the dark forces, use it to charge their corporations, corpses or dead entities, banks, and other commerce systems, so that they can keep their game of conning humanity alive. Without our energy to charge their corporations and commerce systems, their evil game of commerce will not have enough power to stay in business. As human beings, we are being used as batteries. This is why before we go to court, they have to charge us first. During the court hearing, the judge reads the charges and then charges them off or discharges them after a verdict or judgment is made. This process is called a hearing because when you are charged with something and summoned to go to court, you are called the defendant or defendant which is a deaf person who is a ward of the court and is about to meet his end by the judge. 28 Hence, the word defendant, defendant. The phrase a ward of the court means an incompetent person or a person who is unable to care for himself, so the court must assume responsibility for his or her well-being. This is how the court sees you, a deaf and ignorant child who does not know the definitions of words. This is why a short meeting in a courtroom is called a hearing. The court hearing is done to test your hearing and understanding of words. If you, the defendant, defendant, agree to the charges, you basically swear an oath to give up some of your energy to the judge, because the word dant means oath or a promise to oneself resolution in Turkish. The judge has also swore an oath, but his oath is to the god Saturn. Remember what I said earlier why judges wear a black robe? It is their way of paying respect to the god Saturn, the god of law and justice. Another symbol used as a religious context for Saturn is the black square. The black square can also be found in the teachings of Islam. Have you ever heard of the sacred black cube in Mecca called the Kaaba? This sacred black cube that Muslims pilgrimage to represents the god Saturn. The black mortarboard, graduation hat, that high school and college students wear when they graduate also symbolizes the god Saturn. Saturn was and is still such an important god that today we dedicated a day for Saturn, which is known as Saturn Day or Saturday. It is right in your face. Saturn is also known as the Lord of the Ring. When people get married today, they use the ring as a symbol for their marriage. What they do not realize is that the ring also symbolizes the god Saturn. This is the origin of the ring ritual that people do when they get married. What you need to know about rituals is that they have energetic binding forces attached to them. These binding forces are not dependent upon personal knowledge or beliefs. By simply taking the action to perform the religious ring ritual, you consent to whatever the ring ritual is designed to do. During the ancient times, Saturn was also known as El, the Hebrew word for God. In the Hebrew Bible there are four words translated God, El, Elah, Eloah, Elohim. The oldest Semitic word meaning God is El. Linguists believe its base meaning is strength or power. El is the strong one, or the deity, God. 29 When translating names that contain the segment, El, it usually refers to, Elohim, that is Elohim, or God also known as, Eloah.301 thing you should know about the four Hebrew words for God, that is, El, Elah, Eloah, and Elohim, 
is that they have a strong connection to the name of the Islam god called Allah, Saturn being El, was under the domination of Egypt. That whole area had its philosophies, ideas, and its people being dominated by Egypt. So Isis was the first main divinity. Now, with the coming of Akhenaten, the worship was then changed to the worship of Amenra, the sun. This is where we get sun ray from, from Amenra. Amenra was worshipped in the temples as God's son, sun. At the end of the service, they would say Amen, because they were sending a prayer to God through Amenra, God's son, sun. So they would say Amen when they sent the prayer through God's son, sun. The ancient Egyptians said nobody had seen God, and perhaps, there is nobody who is ever going to see God, but when you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father. And when you pray to the Father, you pray directly to the Father, but you send your prayer through God's Son, Amen Ra. So at the end of the prayer you say, Amen.31 Today, after Christians pray to God, they say Amen. What Christians do not realize is that when they say Amen, they agree to pray to and acknowledge the ancient god Ra. Another thing most Christians do not realize is that their religion is filled with pagan beliefs. Furthermore, they do not know that their religion has many similarities to Islam. The content in the previous few paragraphs is evidence of this. Islam is just another version of Christianity. Let us focus our attention back to the court hearing process. During a court trial, when the defendant loses the case, the judge will often order the defendant to pay the court and plaintiff with currency. The word order is defined as a 29 Hebrew streams. Elohim in biblical context. HTTP colon slash slash www.hebraystreams.org slash works slash monotheism slash context Elohim dot html 30 Abraham publications. The name L in the Bible. HTTP colon slash slash www.abarimpublications.com slash meaning slash l dot html hash dot zero ue 4 q 31 Maxwell, Jordan. Matrix of Power, Secrets of World Control. The Book Tree. San Diego, California. 2000. Command of a court or judge. It can also mean a command or notice issued by a military organization or a military commander to troops, sailors etc. Do you remember what I said earlier about why courts operating under the western legal system are military courts? They are military courts because they fall under the jurisdiction of the law of the sea, admiralty law. As for the word currency, its hidden definition is the flow of energy. This is why the stored energy in a battery is called electric current or the currency of electricity. The word currency originated from the Latin word currens, the present participle of curry which means to run. Now, why would they base the word currency on a Latin word that does not have much to do with paper money or coin? Because it is not really about the paper money or coin. Instead, it is about harnessing the energy of humanity. To find out why currency has a strong relation to energy, you need to know the occult meanings of the word currency. To do this, you need to use phonetics and separate the word currency into two words. When spoken out loud, the word currency sounds similar to the term currency. What does a current do in a river? It flows or runs to the sea. Keep in mind that the Latin word currents means to run. The word current can also mean a flowing, flow, as of a river or something that flows, as a stream. The flowing movement of currents is what causes the fresh water in the river to flow to the sea. Once the fresh water is in the sea, its current is now part of the current sea or the current of the sea. Hence. The word currency, current sea. It is important to know that seawater has a lot of salt, and therefore it conducts electricity better than fresh water. In other words, as a medium, seawater is better at transferring energy. Hence, the word electrolyte or electrolyte. Light is energy. The word electrolyte is defined as any substance that dissociates into ions when dissolved in a suitable medium or melted and thus forms a conductor of electricity. Sea water is saturated with electrolyte, electrolyte, just like human blood. Therefore, sea water is the blood of earth. The word currency also sounds similar to the term current kai. In Chinese, the word kai, also known as qi, means natural energy, life force, or energy flow. Be aware that the Chinese word kai is pronounced somewhat similar to the English word sea. Based on these occult definitions, 
Currency means the flow of life force energy. When you really think about it, currency is a medium for exchanging or transferring life force energy, which is why the dark forces are obsessed with using currency to drain your life force energy. One important thing you need to know about the word sea is that it is heavily connected to admiralty law, the law of the sea. When judges and attorneys talk about the word sea in admiralty law, whether they realize it or not, they are not always talking about water. At the deeper level, they are talking about life force energy. This becomes clear when you know that water carries the current slash currency slash current C slash current chi, which is the life force energy needed to charge the dead matrix of the dark forces and their corporations, corpses. The life force energy in water is why water is essential for life to exist in the universe. Currency is also a medium used by corporations to pay their employees. One of the definitions of the word currency is something that is used as a medium of exchange, money. The word medium means an intervening substance through which something else is transmitted or carried on. It is important to know that the plural form of the word medium means a person thought to have the power to communicate with the spirits of the dead or with agents of another world or dimension, also called psychic. In other words, currency slash currency slash current chi is a medium used by the dark magicians to communicate with and transfer life force energy to the dead, the dark forces which are groups of demons. The information in the previous paragraph becomes even more clear when you study the occult definitions of the word cryptocurrency. To find the occult meanings of the word cryptocurrency, you need to split it into two words cryptocurrency and study their hidden definitions. The word crypto originated from the Greek word cryptos, meaning hidden, concealed, secret. As for the origin of the word currency, it is derived from the Latin word currens. When translated into English, it means to run. The information in the previous paragraph does not tell you the deeper occult meanings of the word cryptocurrency, therefore, you need to dissect the word even further, so that it becomes the word crypt. One of the origins of the word crypt is derived from the Latin word crypta, meaning vault, cavern. Another definition of the word crypt is a subterranean chamber or vault especially one beneath the main floor of a church, used as a burial place, a location for secret meetings, etc. In other words, it is a place to bury the dead. When you put all the occult definitions of the word cryptocurrency and the word currency together, you should come to the conclusion that cryptocurrency is the hidden digital currency that the dark magicians want to use to control the global economy and drain humanity's life force energy, so that they can feed this life force energy to the dead the dark forces. Hence, the word cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency. In other words, the words crypt, crypto, hidden vault for the dead, and currency, flow of energy, can be translated as the hidden vault or chamber for storing energy for the dead or flowing energy to the dead. The good news is that if we can prevent the dark magicians from controlling cryptocurrency and learn how to use it in harmony with nature, Cryptocurrency can be an effective financial transaction tool to use for exchanging goods and services. One very important thing you need to know about currency is that it is the dark magician's favorite economic tool to use for draining your energy and using it to charge the dead. The free manual Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars does a great job of explaining the relation between energy and economics. Here are some paragraphs extracted from this manual about energy and economics. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy, and social science, theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science, and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. All of the mathematical theory developed in the study of one energy system, for example, mechanics, electronics, etc., can be immediately applied in the study of any other energy system, for example, economics. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people, inductance, with people corresponding to a magnetic field, into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth. 
instead of real compensation. They would put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for, so long as he had someone's stock of gold as a persuader to show his customers. Mr. Rothschild loaned his promissory notes to individuals and to governments. These would create overconfidence. Then he would make money scarce, tighten control of the system, and collect the collateral through the obligation of contracts. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to ignite a war. Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win the war. Dot in this structure, credit, presented as a pure element called currency, has the appearance of capital, but is in effect negative capital. Hence, it has the appearance of service, but is in fact, indebtedness or debt. It is therefore an economic inductance instead of an economic capacitance, and if balanced in no other way, will be balanced by the negation of population, war, genocide. The total goods and services represent real capital called the gross national product, and currency may be printed up to this level and still represent economic capacitance, but currency printed beyond this level is subtractive, represents the introduction of economic inductance and constitutes notes of indebtedness. War is therefore the balancing of the system by killing the true creditors, the public which we have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency, and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and regeneration of those resources. Dot economics is only a social extension of a natural energy system. It, also, has its three passive components, because of the distribution of wealth and the lack of communication and lack of data. This field has been the last energy field for which a knowledge of these three passive components has been developed. In simple terms, the previous paragraphs in block quotation are basically telling you that currency can be used to steal the people's energy and time. It is important to know that paper or digital currency can be used for good or evil purposes. Unfortunately, the dark forces and their minions are in control of the global financial system, and therefore if they were to succeed at using digital currency to totally control the global economy, the human race would suffer greatly for many years. Because cryptocurrency is a digital currency, it can be used to totally enslave us in the matrix. This matrix is an artificial computer generated hologram that is managed by a very advanced quantum computing system. This artificial holographic matrix was created by the dark forces and their minions to enslave us. In other words, the matrix is the hell on earth. Many people are worried that if they do not do good deeds and join a religion, they may go to hell after they die. What they do not know is that they are already living in hell. It is called the matrix, which is the land of the dead. To comprehend how the matrix was created, you need to know what the universe is made of. At the deepest level of the external reality, everything is energy and consciousness. When I say external reality, I am talking about the reality outside of the fabric of space. The realm behind the fabric of space is known by today's scientists as dark energy. Ancient civilizations referred to it as the ether. In certain occult teachings, the ether is known as the fifth element. In Sanskrit it is called Akasha, which is the essence of all things in the material world. After the ether, the next level of the external reality is made of crystallizations of frozen light. Some spiritual teachings refer to them as kelans. When these kelans are grouped together in grid-like patterns, they form the morphogenetic field crystal body. Morphogenetic field is an invisible and living thought form field that function as the blueprint or template upon which matter is manifested. It is also a field that allows consciousness to create structure so that it can experience itself. To make it easier for you to understand, imagine that kelans are like light bulbs. When these kelans, light bulbs are charged with energy, they light up in certain ways creating light patterns. These are the energy or light codes of the universe. These light codes work similar to quantum computer codes or quits. Your perception of reality is created when your body and mind process these light codes and project them as encoded light into the external world. This all occurs at the subconscious level. At the conscious level, you see these encoded light as matter. The dark forces are well aware of how Keelans work. Because of this, they were able to create artificial quantum computer codes and manipulate our bodies and minds to process these artificial codes. This process allows them to hijack our natural reality to a certain degree. It also allows them to plug our DNA into their matrix, 
and therefore enslaving our minds inside a quantum computer generated reality. The purpose for plugging our DNA into their matrix is to enslave our minds, so that they can use us as batteries. The dark forces need to feed on our life force energy to survive, because they have been cut off from the eternal life current of the Supreme Creator. This is why they like to order their minions to engineer wars. Wars create a lot of fear energy for the dark forces to feed on. They love the energy of fear because it gives them a high of lust similar to the high feeling that drug addicts experience when they do drugs. Because the demons of the dark forces are the dead entities that need to feed on humanity's life force energy to survive, they are astral parasites or energy vampires. They are energy vampires for the reason that they need to feed on the energy of humanity to survive, and they need our permission before they can do anything to us. This is where the idea of vampires comes from. The human DNA works similar to an antenna and the planets and stars are like radio stations that send out signals or electromagnetic waves. These signals contain the codes of reality for the reason that they have energy codes, information, in them. When these signals reach our bodies, they are processed by our minds and bodies in a way that allows our DNA to use the information to project the right frequencies of light, energy into the external world. This process literally creates our perception of reality and material world. This is possible because matter is a projection of energy. In other words, the material world is a giant hologram. Here is an excerpt from my book Staradim, second edition, that explains this process further, to help simplify how our external reality is constructed through holographic projections of energy. Let us turn our attention to how a movie projector works. A movie projector basically works by continuously moving films along a path between a light source and a lens, causing a light effect that projects the image inside the films onto a screen. The movie projector can be metaphorically referred to as the observer's consciousness and the light can be associated with energy. Each film can be metaphorically referred to as a point in time, the lens acts like DNA, and the screen upon which the illusion is projected on is like the unified field from which all matter is manifested. When the film is not moving, everything is still and therefore there is no time or linear action. Once the projector is turned on and the film starts moving, there are movements on the screen, causing an illusion of linear actions and time. The illusion that is projected onto the screen, unified field, is caused by the light, energy, as it travels through the lens. DNA, causing it to project outward into the external world. The illusions that are projected can be likened to an observer's experiences. Some important things you need to know about time are that it does not move and is not truly linear. Linear time is only achieved when an observer's consciousness moves through portions of the unified field of time. When an observer's consciousness does not move through this unified field, time is simultaneous. To trap us in their matrix, the dark forces and their minions created very advanced holographic technology to intercept some of the natural signals of our planets and sun, so that they can replace some of these signals with their artificial quantum computer codes. These computer codes are the codes of their matrix. When the dark forces use their holographic technology and quantum computers to broadcast the computer codes of the matrix to Earth. These codes are received by our DNA and then our DNA processes the codes and projects the information as encoded light into the external world. This process alters our natural holographic reality, allowing the dark forces to create a reality that they want. The matrix used by the dark forces to overlay Earth's natural reality is one of their greatest technologies for enslaving our minds and souls. The matrix is very effective for enslaving us because it looks very similar to the natural reality of Earth, and therefore most people have no idea that they live in a matrix reality, which is an artificial hologram. Unlike the matrix, our natural reality and the universe are made of crystallizations of frozen light, which are energy codes. Is there evidence that the universe is made of energy codes? To find one of the evidence, you need to study the work of theoretical physicist Dr. James Gates Jr. Recently, he found evidence of computer codes in the fabric of space. Working on the branch of physics called supersymmetry, Dr. James Gates Jr. discovered what he describes as the presence of what appear to resemble a form of computer code, called error correcting codes, embedded within, or resulting from, the equations of supersymmetry that describe fundamental particles. 
32 he called these codes adinkras. One of the tools that the dark forces like to use to prevent us from deleting the digital codes of their matrix and replacing them with the natural energy codes of the universe's language. Other tools they like to use to prevent us from rising above their matrix are religion and the media. By using religion and the media to condition us how to think. They can control our thought patterns to a large degree. This allows them to create a reality that they want. If you know that the human collective thought is what creates the human reality on earth, then you should know why the dark forces want to control how we think. Reality is thought construction and therefore when we, the human race, collectively think in certain ways, our thoughts, beliefs, and actions shape and define what our reality will look like. This is possible because matter is an illusion and is focused into existence by the power of thought. As a collective, we are literally creating the reality of earth. We are not aware of this thought manifestation process because it occurs in our subconscious minds. The language, media, education, and religious system are four of the main tools that the dark forces like to use to hijack our reality. The political, technology, and energy system are also three other important tools that they like to use to manipulate and control our reality. It is important to know that these tools are not evil, but are being used for evil purposes. It is also important to know that everyone living on earth has been physically and spiritually enslaved by the dark forces. This is why earth is called a prison planet. The dark forces are well aware of how the universe works. This is because they understand the language of the universe and know how sacred geometry works. The language of the universe is based on frequency, light, sound, vibration and sacred geometry. It is a very powerful communication and information system. In the wrong hands, a certain percentage of this language system can be used to control us and hijack our reality. However, it can also be used to free us from the matrix of the dark forces. The movie The Matrix was created by the dark magicians and their minions to mock us and tell us that we have been enslaved by their masters the dark forces. Unfortunately, most of us are too brainwashed, ignorant, and spiritually brain dead to realize this. To learn more about the matrix of the dark forces, download or view my free seminar titled The Matrix Decoded, decoding the occult messages in the matrix and study the information in it. This seminar teaches you how to free your mind and soul from the real matrix. Let us focus our attention back to the relation between corporation and currency. When you go to work at a corporation, the corporation often pays you hourly. Every hour is recorded to make sure that you are paid for investing your time and energy into the company. After you have worked for a certain amount of time, you are given a weekly or bi-weekly paycheck, usually on Friday. Once you take your paycheck to the bank to cash it for currency, the currency now represents your time and energy. One important thing you need to know about the words bank and currency is that they are related to the word river. What does a river have on its two sides to prevent water from flowing out of it? River banks. Corporate banks are like rivers because they regulate currency. Currency. In other words, they regulate the flow of energy just like how river banks regulate the flow of the energy of water. They did not combine the word river and the word banks to make the word river banks by accident. To understand how currency is used to drain your energy at a deeper level, you need to know certain occult definitions of the word commerce. The word commerce is defined as an interchange of goods or commodities, especially on a large scale between different countries, foreign commerce, or between different parts of the same country domestic commerce, trade, business. It can also mean sexual intercourse or intellectual or spiritual interchange, communion. To find the deeper meanings of the word commerce, you need to know its origins. One of the origins of the word commerce is the Latin word commerciam, meaning trade, trafficking. The word trafficking is defined as the movement of vehicles, ships, persons, etc., in an area, along a street, through an airlane, over a water route, etc. Therefore, this word has a strong connection to water and ships. Remember what I said in the beginning of this book about how your body is related to ship and water. In legal terms, the word trafficking means the carrying on of an illegal commercial activity such as selling drugs or substances that are banned. Because one of the definitions of the word commerce is sexual intercourse and the word commerce is related to trafficking, when people participate in commerce, 
they are in a sense selling their bodies for sex, in other words, they are the whores slash horse of Babylon. The commerce system that creates debt and exploits nature is the dark forces favorite way of trafficking human beings and tricking us to commit adultery, so that they can turn us into human batteries. It is their way of tricking us to commit sin and treason against humanity and nature, and offend the supreme creator. Hence, the Bible verse Romans 6:23 for the wages of sin is death, sin is death slash dead slash death, one of the many systems that is a part of the commerce system is the stock market, this vampiric financial system is rigged and commits illegal and unlawful commercial activities on a daily basis, every day, people are losing their money in the stock market and therefore are being screwed by the commerce system, two slang definitions of the word screw, chiefly British, are an old broken down horse and salary, wages. In American English, the slang definition of the verb version of the word screw means to practice extortion, to engage in promiscuous sex, or to have coitus. The word coitus means sexual intercourse. The definitions of the words in bold font in this paragraph and the previous few paragraphs show how the commerce and stock market system are related to sex, money, and horse. The commerce system is full of sexual symbolism because the dark forces and their minions are not only after our life force energy but also our sexual energy. This is why sexual symbolism is everywhere, especially in television commercials. They are using the commerce system to steal our sexual energy and turn us into the whores slash horse of Babylon. In the stock market, the process of selling stocks is also known as stock trading. The people who trade stocks in the stock market are known as traders and therefore are traitors of humanity. Why is that you may ask? Because phonetically the word trader sounds very similar to the word traitor. A trader of stocks is a traitor of humanity, because he or she is participating in the financial game to steal humanity's energy and enslave the human race. 33. The word trader means stealer, trafficker one engaged in commerce, the word trader can also mean a ship used in trade, especially foreign trade, as for the word traitor, it means a person who betrays another, a cause, or any trust or a person who commits treason by betraying his or her country, the definitions in the previous paragraph show the connection among the words ship, water, and commerce, remember, it is all about tricking us to agree to allow the dark forces to steal our energy using commerce, maritime law, the law of merchant, and admiralty law, the law of the sea. Why the sea? Because the sea is mostly made of water and water carries the current slash currency slash currency slash current chi. Furthermore, our bodies are also mostly made of water, which is the water that contains our life force energy. When you participate in their debt-based commerce system, you are in a sense committing treason against humanity. If you want strong evidence of this, study how the debt-based monetary system and the stock market screw people over and over again with fraudulent debt. These two financial systems are based on greed and competition, which are great for manifesting negative emotions, violence, and wars. For someone to make millions of dollars in the stock market, hundreds and possibly thousands of people have to lose a lot of money in that market. Did that single person work a million times harder than the rest of the people to earn that much money? What that person did was treason against the supreme creator, because he sold people's soul energy to the dark forces, so that he could become a millionaire. People who make money from the stock market and other similar systems are helping the dark magicians to enslave the people of the world and preventing poor countries from thriving. The people living in these countries are not poor because they are dumb or lazy. In fact, many of them are very intelligent and work a lot harder than people living in rich countries. The truth is that people living in poor countries lack wealth, because it has been engineered that way by the dark magicians and their international bankers who control the global central banks. The international bankers can prevent poor countries from thriving by charging them high interest rates and not giving them enough funds to invest in economic development projects. One of the purposes for preventing poor countries from rising above poverty is that it makes it easier for the dark magicians to exploit the poor countries of their wealth and natural resources. By doing this, they can give some of that wealth to the rich countries, allowing them to trick the people of rich countries to think that they are better than the people of poor countries. In reality, 
Most people living in rich countries are delusional for the reason that they are so brainwashed that they can barely think for themselves. People living in developed countries often like to invest in the stock market. What they do not realize is that the stock market is a system that does not flow well with the laws of nature. Every time people participate in the stock market, they unknowingly support the evil deed of selling human souls, because the word sold sounds similar to sold. At the deeper level, the stock market is the commerce system that sells or trades our soul energy, which is why it is called a stock market. Many of the stocks in the stock market do not really represent the shares of corporations. Instead, they are linked to the artificial persons of the living men. The main reason why corporate stocks have value is because they are linked to human beings. In other words, we are the livestock or living stock that are sold, sold in the stock market by the traders traders of humanity. The word stock is defined as a quantity of something accumulated, as for future use. As for the word livestock, it is defined as the horses, cattle, sheep, and other useful animals kept or raised on a farm or ranch. The dark magicians consider us human beings as sheep, which is why Christians are called sheep. We are the sheep living on a farm called earth which is a prison planet for domesticating human beings to be good little slaves. To be more specific, we are the baby, baby raised on a farm to produce honey or golden blood plasma for the dark forces, so that they can use it to extend their lifespan. In certain ways, most human beings are not that much different from horses, cattle, and sheep because they have been domesticated by the dark magicians of the new world order to obey their authorities and government. This is why when you talk to people about the new world order and government conspiracy, most of them look at you like you are crazy. Some of them may even physically attack you for telling them the truth. What a bunch of sheeple and domesticated animals. The sheeple are so brainwashed they cannot see that they are being domesticated to behave like sheep and sold slash sealed on the stock market. To make matters worse. Their soul energy is being stocked in the stock market to be sucked out later by the demons or energy vampires of the dark forces. This is why one of the definitions of the word stock is a quantity of something accumulated, as for future use. One of the origins of the word stock is derived from the old French word stock, meaning stump, post, stake, tree trunk, log. The word trunk originated from the old French word tronc, meaning trunk of a tree trunk of the human body, wooden block. In English, one of the definitions of the word trunk is the body of a person or an animal excluding the head and limbs, torso. It can also mean the main channel, artery, or line in a river, railroad, highway, canal, or other tributary system. The occult definitions in the previous paragraph reveal the relation among the stock market, the human body, and water. In other words, your body is being sold sealed on the stock market for currency slash currency slash current chi, the currency that represents your time and energy. Do you remember what I said in chapter 3 about how the birth certificate bond is a financial contract created to enslave your body and soul, so that they can use you as collateral for the debt of the government? I also told you that your birth certificate is being traded on the stock market because it is a bond, which is why your birth information is recorded on bond paper. The paper used to create the birth certificate. In other words, your birth certificate is a registered security or a stock certificate. Do you now understand why human beings are the livestock or living stock of the stock market? When you sell or trade stocks, what you are really doing is selling other people's soul energy, and therefore are treating people like slaves in the religious game of death known as commerce. Be aware that I am not saying you should not trade goods and services with other people. What I am saying is that you should avoid using the debt-based monetary system, the stock market, and other vampiric financial systems to trade energy. These vampiric systems were created for the purpose of destroying nature and enslaving souls to be used as batteries. Commerce is not the same as the process of living people trading goods and services. Commerce deals with the charging of the dead whereas when living people trade goods and services, they are mutually exchanging their energy with one another. When two people mutually exchange goods and services, there is no vampiric system to steal their living energy. Another popular vampiric system that is part of the commerce system is the mortgage industry. A mortgage is one of the most parasitic debts you can get from a bank. To comprehend how parasitic and vampiric a mortgage is, 
you need to dig deep into the hidden layers of the word mortgage, so that you can find its occult meanings. The overt definition of the word mortgage is a conveyance of an interest in property as security for the repayment of money borrowed. Another definition of the word mortgage is the charging of real, or personal, property by a debtor to a creditor as security for a debt, especially one incurred by the purchase of the property, on the condition that it shall be returned on payment of the debt within a certain period. The two definitions of the word mortgage in the previous paragraph only define mortgage at the surface level. To find its deeper meanings, you need to use an etymology dictionary to find the origins of the word mortgage and split it into two words, so that it transforms into the term mortgage. The word mortgage, mortgage originated from two old French words, which are mort and gage. In old French, mort means dead and gage means pledge. The word pledge is derived from the old French word plegia, meaning to promise or to solemnly promise or guarantee. One of the modern definitions of the word pledge is a solemn promise or agreement to do or refrain from doing something. To connect the dots, when you take out a mortgage, you unknowingly make a pledge, promise, to the dead. This is the general occult definition of the word mortgage. So, what is the dead? The dead represents the dark forces, groups of demons and their corporations, corpses or dead bodies. The word corporation has a strong connection to the dead, because its deeper meaning is a dead body. The word corporation can also be written as corporation. Phonetically, the root word corp sounds similar to the word corpse, which is defined as a dead body, usually of a human being. Do you still need more evidence? According to Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition, a corporation is an artificial person or legal entity created by or under the authority of the laws of a state. An artificial person is considered a dead entity, because it does not exist in the real world. The word mortgage also has a strong connection to the words morgue and mortuary. This is why the place where dead bodies are stored is called a morgue. Mortgages are created in a way that makes them hard to pay off, so that the people who sign a mortgage, a pledge to the dead, contract have to work most of their lives to pay it off. This allows the debt-based monetary system to drain their energy and use it to charge the dead with currency. The currency that people make from many hours of working at a corporation, dead body. Do you remember what I said earlier about why currency is a medium for exchanging or transferring life force energy? At the spiritual level, people who sign a mortgage are basically signing their lives away to the dead. They are also making a promise to the dead to charge it with their energy, so that the dead can stay alive. In other words, they are making a solemn pledge to the dead to ensure that the dead will be paid and charged with energy. Phonetically, the word dead sounds similar to the word debt. Furthermore, the word debt has a strong connection to the word mortgage. Every time you pay a mortgage slash debt slash dead, you commit sin. If you want evidence of this, go to merriamwebster.com and search for the definition of debt and you should see the word sin as one of its definitions. The word sin originated from the Old English word sign, meaning moral wrongdoing, injury, mischief, enmity, feud, guilt, crime, offense against God, misdeed. The reason why you commit sin when you pay a debt is because you are helping the dark forces to enslave the human race. The debt system is controlled by the dark forces and they are using it to drain the energy of humanity and harm nature, which are against natural law, God's law. Maybe this is why the Bible verse Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Sin is debt slash dead slash death. If you want to understand the sin of debt a little deeper, you need to know how the words mortgage, debt, dead, and battery are all related to the dollar, which is also known as legal tender. According to the 1893 Dictionary of Arts and Sciences, and General Literature, the RSP 9th Encyclopedia Britannica, the word legal means the undoing of God's law. The legal system practices unnatural laws and therefore it is practicing the color of law or the appearance of law. In other words, it is an artificial system or a dead, debt system, which is why it needs your currency, current chi to charge it with energy. The words sin, mortgage, debt, dead, and charge are all related to the dollar because the dollar is legal tender or dead money. What do people do with some of their legal tender? They bury it in the banks. What you need to know about the word bank is that it is related to the word currency. Furthermore, 
Both of these words are related to the word river. Do you remember what I said earlier about the relation between the words river and bank? What does a river have on both of its sides to prevent water from flowing out? River banks. Corporate banks are like rivers because they regulate currency. In other words, they regulate the flow of energy, just like how river banks regulate the flow of the energy of water. Banks need to regulate the flow of energy because they need to keep track of the current chi, flow of energy, to charge the dead debt. This is why when the dead, debt is not paid, the banks may send a loan shark after people who refuse to pay the debt, dead. They did not use the term loan shark for no reason. It is all about water and energy, because water carries the current slash currency slash currency slash current chi, which is needed to charge the dead, debt. By now you should know how the words sin, legal, stock, mortgage, debt, dead, currency, corporation, Banks, river banks, commerce, battery, and charge are all related to the process of harnessing the energy of humanity. The Earth Matrix drama is all about tricking humanity to consent to be a battery, so that the dark forces and their minions can drain our life force energy to charge their dead matrix system. What banks do not tell you about mortgages and loans today, local banks do not actually lend out lawful money but instead lend out notes or checks that are backed by a promise to pay. Before lending out these notes or checks, the borrower has to sign documents that have terms and conditions written on them along with a price tag, the amount of money the borrower agrees to pay back. A more specific name for these documents is negotiable contracts, loan agreements, or promissory notes. After you sign a loan agreement, contract, with a bank, it legally binds you to the terms and conditions of that agreement. What banks do not tell you is that when you sign a loan agreement or promissory note, you give value to that note for the reason that it is backed by your promise to pay. One thing you need to know about a valid agreement, contract, is that it is a mutual agreement. A mutual agreement cannot be truly valid without full disclosure. Today, nearly all bank loan agreements are not truly mutual agreements because they do not come with full disclosure. In other words, they are fraudulent agreements, and therefore have no legal or lawful standing. Another reason why they are fraudulent is because the money that banks give to you as a loan is created out of thin air. After you are approved for a bank loan, for example, mortgage, the bank requires you to sign a promissory note. After signing it, the bank, not referring to a central bank, deposits your promissory note into its account as money, which is actually your money, and then uses your promissory note to exchange for credits in your transaction account, and thereby creating new money. In other words, you are the creditor, not the debtor and therefore the bank does not loan you anything. After the transaction, the bank turns around and lends you that same money as a bank loan. Did the bank tell you in advance that it was going to lend you your own money? Did you agree to allow the bank to lend you your own money? If your honest answer is no, then it was not a mutual agreement. What the bank did is fraud because it lend you your own money. By lending you your own money, the bank makes 100% profit every time you pay your monthly payment. If you add the interest, rent, into the equation, the bank makes more than 100% profit. This is how banks steal your money without your knowledge. If you and I were to do this, they would throw us in jail for a very long time. For evidence of what I just said, read page 6-7 of Modern Money Mechanics by the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. On page 6-7, you will find a sentence that says, what they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. When the sentence above refers to they, it is referring to banks. If you have a mortgage or are planning to take out a mortgage, you need to know that you are not the owner of your house. This is because the mortgage contract appoints you as the tenant and not the owner of the house. In other words, you do not hold legal title to the land and the house. A tenant is defined as an individual who occupies or possesses land or premises by way of a grant of an estate of some type, such as in fee, for life, for years or at will. A person who has the right to temporary use and possession of particular real property, which has been conveyed to that person by a landlord. Another definition of the word tenant is a person who occupies real property owned by another based upon an agreement between the person and the landlord, owner, 
almost always for rental payments. As a tenant, you do not legally own your house and land. Furthermore, you are required to pay rent, which is the interest of the mortgage, a pledge to the dead. In other words, the interest is the rent. Banks do not tell you this because they want you to think that you are the owner of your house. Once you comprehend how the mortgage industry really works, you will know that there is not that much difference between renting a house and buying a house. After you buy a house, you are also required to pay property tax, which is the rent owed by your landlord to another landlord. As a homeowner, your landlord is the bank and the bank's landlord is the state. The state owns the land by claiming that the land is controlled and owned by them through their land registry. The state can make this claim because people do not rebut it and therefore it becomes a fact. By now you should know why taking out a mortgage is a sin. Taking out a mortgage is like asking for a death sentence. If you have a mortgage and want to know how to free yourself from it, you need to first know how to defend your natural rights. You also need to learn how the legal system works. You do not need to know everything about the legal system. However, you need to know enough about it, so that you are not afraid to defend yourself against the agents of the legal system. A great website to help you learn how to defend your natural rights is privatist.me. Another great source is to watch some of Dean Clifford's seminars and radio interviews on YouTube. Dean is knowledgeable in trust law and understands how the legal system really works. Trust law, which is similar to contract law, is the highest form of man's law. So by learning how to use it to defend your rights, judges and attorneys will run away from you like scared little kids. Besides these two sources, Curtis Richard Callenbuck.xis is also another great source of information. Most of us are not aware of the information in this book, because we have relied too much on TV for information. The acronym TV stands for television or television. They are telling you a vision to brainwash you. This is why TV shows are called TV programs. They are using TV programs to condition and program your mind, so that they can control how you think. It is right in your face and hidden in plain sight. The solutions, turn off the television, television and remove your consent and then learn how to defend your natural rights. Chapter 6 Word Magic 3 The Forbidden Secrets of Religion Since the day we were born, we have been conditioned and brainwashed by the religious system and mainstream media to think that religion is the source for divine truth. Furthermore, society has conditioned us to blindly follow religion like a flock of sheep, so that we do not question the teachings of religion. By not questioning the teachings of religion and believing they contain the words of God, it has made us vulnerable to being controlled by the dark forces. Religion is one of the most powerful tools to use for enslaving our minds and souls, because it manipulates us to think that we are weak and powerless. To make matters worse, religion teaches us to rely on certain saviors to save us. The main purpose of this is to condition us to think like slaves making it easier for the dark forces to control and enslave our minds and souls. The Savior program is one of the most successful mind control programs ever created by the dark forces. This is why the Savior program is often found in religious stories, myths, and movies. Today, nearly every movie that comes out of Hollywood has a Savior or a group of Saviors. This also applies to most foreign movies. Religion also uses the power of fear to scare us to obey its version of God. It does this by brainwashing us to believe that if we do not follow the teachings of religion, we will be banished from the kingdom of God and suffer for eternity. This fear tactic is designed to keep us living in a constant state of fear and compliance allowing the people working in high positions of the religious system to enslave our minds and souls. The main purpose of using religion to enslave us is to turn us into human batteries, so that they can drain our life force energy. To be fair, religion does have some empowering and enlightening knowledge. However, this knowledge is added into religion to create the illusion that religion is the path of truth. In other words, it is added into religion to trick us to support the religious system. If all they preach in religion is disempowering, dreadful, and joyless knowledge, we will eventually lose interest in religion and know that it is a tool for enslaving us. No matter how we look at religion, 
at the end of the day it is still a tool of enslavement. By the end of this chapter, you will know exactly what that means. One very important thing you need to know about the religious system is that it is heavily involved in the art of magic. For example, the Bible is not only a book filled with religious stories, it is also a book filled with magic spells. The fact that the Bible has allegories, hidden codes, and sacred words is evidence that it is a book saturated with word magic. Every religion on earth has word magic embedded into its teachings, especially the major religions of the world. In this chapter, I will concentrate mostly on Christianity for the reason that I am more knowledgeable in Christianity than other religions. When I was a kid, I went to a Baptist church for a few years. During those years, I read many verses of the King James Bible and was introduced to many Christian beliefs, so I am aware of the teachings of Christianity. Before I expose some dirty secrets of the church, I want to make it clear to you that my intention is not to offend anyone. The main reason why I am doing this is to show you the facts. It is up to you to accept them as truths. Another reason why I want to share these secrets with you is to increase your awareness so that you are less vulnerable to be manipulated by the church. My intention is not to spread fear, but to inform you of the facts, so that you can become awake and aware. Becoming awake and aware is one of the first steps to spiritual freedom. For you to comprehend how the church system works, you need to know its history. According to some religion scholars, the early churches were pagan churches, and therefore their teachings were heavily focused on the worshipping of pagan gods. In general, Paganism is a religion that worships many gods and goddesses and tends to be nature oriented. During the time of the Roman Empire, Christianity was a minority religion, but it soon became popular and spread throughout Rome. This religious movement became so strong that it threatened the Roman religion, which was heavily based on polytheism and paganism. As Christianity became more and more popular, it caused a lot of conflicts between the Christian and Roman religion. So Emperor Constantine ordered that the basic principles of the Roman religion and the Christian religion be merged together into one religion. The official unification of these two religions occurred at the Council of Nicaea, which resulted in the birth of the Holy Roman Church. This is one of the reasons why there is a lot of pagan beliefs in Christianity. For example, Christmas and Easter are pagan holidays. Most Christians do not know this because the pagan beliefs and stories in Christianity are encoded to prevent Christians from knowing that their religion is filled with pagan ideologies. Do you need evidence of what I just said? Read further and I will show you all the evidence you need. Why Christmas is a pagan holiday for worshipping the sun Christmas is a time when most people, especially people living in western countries, like to get together to celebrate a day full of evergreen trees, colorful lights, and delicious foods. Today, Christmas is often viewed as a holiday for giving and receiving presents. Unfortunately, most people have no clue as to what Christmas is really about, because they have never investigated the origins of Christmas and the symbols associated with it. When you start to investigate the origins of Christmas and learn to decipher the symbols of Christmas, you will eventually come to the conclusion that Christmas is not what most people think it is. Furthermore, you will notice that Christmas is filled with pagan ideology. Besides giving and receiving presents, many Christians like to celebrate Christmas to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. What most of us do not know is that Christmas, in its original sense, is a pagan holiday for worshipping a solar deity. Hence, the Bible verse John 8 12, again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. The person named Jesus in the Bible is not a person with a body made of flesh and blood, instead, it is just a name of a character. A large quantity of the time when the Bible refers to Jesus, it is actually referring to the sun that rises in the east and sets in the west. Jesus is also known as the Son of God. Phonetically, the word sun sounds almost exactly like the word sun. Without the sun, we cannot survive because we need the energy sunlight, of the sun to keep us warm and grow food. Therefore, Jesus or the sun, son of God is our savior and the light of the world. Sometimes you have to pay attention to the phonics of words to find their occult meanings. When you understand that Jesus represents the sun, the light of the world, then many of the stories in the Bible will make more sense. When you go through the process of accepting the idea that Jesus is a metaphor for the sun, 
you may feel angry at the church. However, the more you decode the Bible, the more you will realize that it has many empowering knowledge. To access the empowering knowledge in the Bible, you need to learn how to decipher its content. Here are some verses from the Bible that I will decode to help you see the hidden knowledge within these Bible verses. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John 9 to 5 Again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8 12 And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Mark 13 26 So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. John 19 to 5 When the Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world, it is talking about the sun, sunlight, that lights up the world when it rises in the morning. This is why the Bible talks about Jesus coming in the clouds and wearing the crown of thorns. The thorns symbolize the rays of the sun. Have you ever wondered why there are many images of Jesus with the sun behind his head? It is because he is a metaphor for the sun. Do you still need more evidence that Jesus is a metaphor for the sun? To find more evidence, you need to pay attention to the Bible verse crown of thorns and find the occult meaning of the word crown. The Latin word for crown is corona. In English, the word corona is defined as a white or colored circle or set of concentric circles of light seen around a luminous body, especially around the sun or moon. Based on these occult definitions, the phrase crown of thorns means circles of light with rays. Once you comprehend that Jesus represents the sun, the story of Jesus being born on December 25th in Bethlehem and the story of the three kings following the brightest star in the sky to find Jesus will make more sense. To keep it simple, the three kings represents the three stars of Orion's belt and the brightest star in the sky represents the star called Sirius. Orion's belt or the belt of Orion, also known as the three kings or three sisters, is an asterism in the constellation Orion. It consists of the three bright stars Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka. Point three four certain branches of Christianity like to teach their followers that Jesus was born on the 25th of December. This religious story of Jesus being born on the 25th of December is more evidence that Jesus represents the sun, the light of the world and the savior of mankind. As the winter solstice approaches from the northern hemisphere, the days become shorter and shorter until it reaches the shortest day of the year, which occurs on December 21st. On the day after December 21st, which is December 22nd, the sun stops moving south for three days. Hence, the assertion that Jesus died for three days. On December 25th, the sun moves one degree north, therefore, it is said that the sun, sun died for three days and was resurrected on December 25th. This one degree movement of the sun is very subtle, but it can be measured using very sensitive equipment. This movement of the sun is one of the core meanings of Christmas, which is a holiday for worshipping the resurrection of the sun. Christmas is also a holiday for worshipping the dark forces. I will elaborate on this in greater details later in this chapter. One important thing you should know about December 25th is that on this date the three kings, the three stars of Orion's belt, line up in a way that points towards Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. When you draw an imaginary line through the three stars of Orion's belt and Sirius, it points to the area where the sun rises over the horizon. This is why the three kings followed the brightest star, Sirius, in the sky. Sirius shows the three kings where the sun will rise over the horizon on December 25th, also known as the date of the birth of the sun slash sun slash Jesus, Sirius is always easy to find. It's the sky's brightest star. Plus, anyone familiar with the constellation Orion can simply draw a line through Orion's belt, to the left. This line will point to Sirius, which is roughly eight times as far from the belt as the belt is wide. 35 By now you should know that Jesus is a metaphor for the sun which is why he is sometimes referred to as God's son or God's son. This fact is even more obvious when you understand why Christians go to church on Sunday. When you split the word Sunday into two words, it transforms into the term Sunday, which means the day of the sun. This is why Christians go to church on Sunday, so that they can worship the sun, Jesus the light of the world. It is right in your face and hidden in plain sight. If you still need more evidence that Jesus is a metaphor for the sun, 
study the sun gods of ancient mythology and you will notice that Jesus has similar characteristics to these ancient sun gods. Here are some popular characteristics of sun gods, in some areas, the calendar originally began in the constellation of Virgo, and the sun would therefore be born of a virgin. The sun is the light of the world. The sun cometh on clouds, and every eye shall see him. The sun rising in the morning is the saviour of mankind. The sun wears a corona, crown of thorns or halo. The sun walks on water. When watching the sun rise in the morning or set at night, the moment when the sun touches the water of the sea is known as the sun slash sun slash Jesus walking on water. This is the occult meaning of the Bible phrase Jesus walks on the water, the sun's followers. Helpers or disciples are the twelve months and the twelve signs of the zodiac or constellations, through which the sun must pass. The sun at twelve o'clock noon is in the house or temple of the Most High, thus, he begins his father's work at age twelve. The sun enters into each sign of the zodiac at thirty degrees, hence, the Son of God begins his ministry at age thirty. The sun is hung on a cross or crucified, which represents its passing through the equinoxes the vernal equinox being Easter, at which time it is then resurrected. 36. Many of the characteristics of Jesus were copied from ancient religious stories and myths about solar deities. Because of this, Jesus is the modern version of ancient solar deities going all the way back to ancient Egypt, Babylonia, and beyond. Some of those ancient solar deities are Horus, Ra, Osiris, Atis, Helios, and Baal because Jesus is a solar deity, he has similar characteristics to Lucifer. The word Lucifer comes from the Latin word Lucifer, meaning morning star. It literally means light bringing. Jesus is the sun, the light of the world, and therefore he is also the light bearer. People who think that Lucifer is a fallen angel has been duped. One of the main reasons why ancient civilizations worshipped the sun is because it is an intelligent creator. Some researchers of occultism have said that the sun is the creator of the elements in our solar system, and plays an important role for creating our holographic reality. In a way, the sun is the physical manifestation of the fire of the supreme creator. This fire is the creative spiritual force that manifests light which is what everything in the universe is made of. Once you know that the sun is a loving and intelligent creator, then the idea of using a character named Jesus to represent the sun is not such a bad concept. Furthermore, the idea of worshipping the sun makes sense. However, be aware that when you worship a being outside of you, you give your powers away to that being. Instead of worshipping the sun, acknowledge it as an intelligent creator and thank it for sending its light to heal the world. In addition, Respect the sun because without it life cannot exist on earth. At this point it should be obvious that Jesus is just a name used as a symbol to represent essential things in nature or important concepts in life. This does not mean that there was not a man from the past who taught about the Christ principles. In fact, there were many great spiritual teachers from the past who taught about the Christ principles. Let us explore deeper into the name Jesus Christ to find more of its occult meanings. To do this, we need to split the word Jesus into two words Jesus. In French, Je means I. Phonetically the letter I sounds exactly like the word I. This is referring to the all-seeing eye, pineal gland, eye of Jesus, eye of Horus slash star slash sun. As a fasus, it is a Latin word for a fish. In astrology, the fish symbolizes the age of Pisces. Based on these occult definitions, Jesus is the sun, star of the age of Pisces. This is why the name Jesus is sometimes enclosed inside a fish symbol. As for the word Christ, it is derived from the Greek word, Christos, meaning the anointed. This can be translated as the Messiah. Phonetically, the Greek word sounds like the word crystal. This is referring to the crystal brain and the pineal gland. The Greek word can also mean denoting anyone anointed with the holy oil. The holy oil is the oil secreted by the brain. This oil travels down the spine and then is spread throughout the body. When you learn how to use certain spiritual and meditation techniques to raise the Kundalini electrical energy up to your pineal gland, it interacts with the holy oil in your pineal gland. This process activates your pineal gland in a certain way that allows you to achieve a state of enlightenment. Why Christmas is a holiday full of occult and satanic symbolism People celebrate Christmas for many reasons, 
But what most of them do not know about Christmas is that it is a holiday full of satanic and occult ideology. Be aware that just because Christmas contains occult ideology does not mean that everything about Christmas is evil. The word occult simply means hidden, concealed, secret. Before we explore the satanic and occult ideology of Christmas, I need to tell you the origins of the word Christmas. Knowing where the word Christmas is derived from will allow you to see the connection between the word Christ and Mass. The word Christmas has a strong connection to a medieval custom of the Roman Church called Mass, which was celebrated at midnight on the eve of December 25th. Put the words Christ and Mass together and you get the word Christ Mass or Christmas. The word Mass is defined as public celebration of the Eucharist in the Roman Catholic Church and some Protestant churches. As for the word Christ, it is derived from the Greek word Christos, meaning the anointed. Based on these two occult definitions, the word Christmas also means a religious celebration for the anointed. Christmas is sometimes referred to as Christmas. The letter X is the Greek symbol for the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet which is Chi, the initial letter in the word comma meaning Christ. In certain occult teachings, the letter X represents the X chromosome that was artificially inserted into our DNA by alien gods using genetic engineering techniques. According to certain geneticists, Human DNA has a mixture of extraterrestrial genes.37 With the help of DNA sequencing technology, some scientists believe they have found the evidence to prove that human DNA contains foreign DNA not from Earth. The idea that human DNA has a mixture of extraterrestrial genes has been discussed among some scientists for decades. These scientists do not like to talk about it in public due to the fear of losing their job. One important thing you need to know about Christmas. Christmas is that it has a lot of sexual symbolism. For example, the letter X is sometimes used to represent sexual activity which is why the letter X sounds like sex. This is also why adult movies are rated X. In Latin, the adjective word mass means manly, virile, brave, noble, masculine, of the male sex. Based on the occult definitions in the previous paragraph, Christmas. Christmas is not only a holiday for celebrating the birth of the sun, sun but is also a holiday for celebrating male sexuality. More evidence of the relation between sex and Christmas can be found in the Roman holiday called Saturnalia. According to certain historians, Saturnalia was a week-long ancient Roman festival in honor of the ancient god Saturn. During the festival, which was celebrated around the time of the winter solstice, Roman courts were closed and Roman citizens were allowed to do almost anything, because it was a period of lawlessness. The ancient Greek writer poet and historian Lucian, in his dialogue entitled Saturnalia, describes the festival's observance in his time. In addition to human sacrifice, he mentions these customs, widespread intoxication, going from house to house while singing naked, rape and other sexual license, and consuming human-shaped biscuits still produced in some English and most German bakeries during the Christmas season. 38 in the English alphabet. The letter X is the 24th letter. This may be related to December 24th which is Christmas Eve or Xmas Eve. Another letter that may be related to Christmas is Y, which is the 25th letter of the English alphabet. What you need to know about the letters X and Y is that they can be used to represent the X and Y chromosome in human cells. Most males and females have 23 pairs of chromosome. The numbered pairs. 122, are called autosomes, and they are the same in males and females. 39 The pair that is different is the 23rd pair, which is known as the sex chromosome. In 38 simple to remember, the history of Christmas. HTTP colon slash slash www.simpleitomember.com slash vitals slash Christmas underscore the real story. HTM 39 The tech DNA basics. HTTP colon slash slash genetics dot fetish dot org slash ask slash ask 456 the cells of males, the 23rd pair chromosome has X and Y chromosome. As for females, the 23rd pair chromosome has double X chromosomes. The word chromosome comes from the Greek words, chroma, and, soma. In general, the word chroma means color and the word soma means body. The human DNA and body are made of different colors or frequency bands. 
just like the different colors of the human chakras. This is why we are called human, phonetically. The word human sounds almost exactly like the phrase human. The word hue is defined as a gradation or variety of a color. Combine the words hue and man and you get the word human slash human. To connect the dots, when you decorate evergreen trees with Christmas lights and put presents underneath them, you unknowingly and symbolically tell the dark forces that you agree to give them your X and Y chromosome and DNA as gifts. This is because symbolically the colorful Christmas lights represent the different colors and frequency bands of your DNA. The word gift is defined as something given voluntarily without payment in return, as to show favor toward someone, honor an occasion, or make a gesture of assistance. Present. This means that when the dark forces come and take your gifts, such as your X and Y chromosome and DNA, they are not in direct violation of your free will because you voluntarily agree to give your gifts to them. Even though you are unaware that the gifts they want to take are your X and Y chromosome and DNA, ignorance is no excuse. The keys to this deception are the symbols. If you have read the first chapter of this book, you should know how powerful symbols are. When symbols are used correctly along with spoken words, they can cast magic spells that can be used for good or evil purposes. Why do you think the dark magicians of this world are so obsessed with symbols? Have you ever wondered why corporations have symbols, corporate logos, to represent their organizations? It has to do with magic. Be advised that using symbols or sigils to create magic spells is not for ignorant and irresponsible people. If you lack knowledge and responsibility, do not play around with sigils and magic because you could end up harming yourself or contacting negative entities, for example, demons and astral parasites. Many demonic possessions happen because of ignorant and irresponsible people playing around with magic spells that they do not understand. In one of the previous paragraphs, I said that when you decorate evergreen trees with Christmas lights and put presents underneath them, you unknowingly and symbolically tell the dark forces that you agree to give them your X and Y chromosome, DNA as gifts. What you need to know about the word gift is that it can be written as GIFD which stands for gamete intrafallopian tube transfer, a process that involves removing a woman's eggs, mixing them with sperm, and immediately placing them into a fallopian tube. Point four zero forty one. When you participate in the Christmas ritual, you symbolically tell the dark forces and their minions that you give them permission to continue their genetic and cloning experiments on the human, human race. This is one of the reasons why the dark forces are getting away with committing evil deeds on humanity. One of the most popular symbols of Christmas is the evergreen tree. Symbolically, the evergreen tree represents the human spine, which is the tree of life. The tree of life can represent a few different things but when it comes to Christmas it symbolizes the human spine. The spine connects to the skull, which is the dome that houses the pineal slash pineal gland. This is your kingdom or kingdom, which is located between the temples of your head. Maybe this is why kings and queens wear a crown on top of their heads to symbolize their kingdom, kingdom between their temples. In other words, your kingdom of God is located between your temples, therefore, you will never find it in a religious temple outside of you. This is why the King James Bible verse Luke 17 colon 20 21 says. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or, Lo there. For, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The Bible verse Luke 17 colon 20 21 is talking about the house inside your skull and between your temples, which is your kingdom, kingdom or temple of God. The word house is derived etymologically from the Gothic word Godhouse, meaning temple or God house. Allegorically, the Bible is telling you that the kingdom of the supreme creator is between your temples and inside your pineal gland, not out in the external world. Unfortunately, most people like to read the Bible literally and therefore are not seeing the real and deeper knowledge. The pineal gland is shaped like a pine cone. Hence, the name pineal, pineal gland. One important thing you need to know about the word pine is that it has a strong connection to the word spine. When you move the letter S in the word spine a space away from the rest of the letters, 
the word spine becomes a spine. The letter S looks like the human spine. Symbolically, the letter S is the spine that connects to the skull that houses the pineal gland. Hence, the word spine, a spine and its connection to the words pineal, pineal and pine cone. Have you ever wondered why pine trees are used as Christmas decorations in homes? The reason why they are used to decorate homes during Christmas is because they symbolize your spine, which is the bone structure that connects to your skull. The area inside your skull is the dome, temple that houses your pineal, pineal gland. This is your kingdom kingdom or temple of God. Symbolically, the pine cones of pine trees represent your pineal gland. According to some occult teachings, the spine is the area of the human body that produces golden blood plasma, also known as Ica. In Greek mythology, Ica was a gold-colored fluid used by the alien gods for longevity, allowing them to live for thousands of years. This is why the spine is sometimes referred to as the tree of life. To connect the dots, when you put presents under the Christmas tree, spine, you symbolically tell the dark forces that you agree to allow them to take the golden blood plasma in your spine as a gift. When are the dark forces planning to do this? Most likely during the ascension process, which is supposed to occur during the end of this age. Maybe this is why ascension is sometimes referred to as the harvest. One of the definitions of the word harvest is to gather, a crop or the like, reap. The word harvest can also mean to cut, divide, block. This definition comes from the Latin word carpere. The best time to harvest something is when it is ripe, and therefore ascension would be the best time to harvest humans. The word ripe comes from the Old English word ripe, meaning ready for reaping, fit for eating, mature. Remember, one of the definitions of the word harvest is reap. Please be aware that I am not saying ascension is all about the harvesting of humans. What I am saying is that the time of ascension is when the dark forces like to trick us to go with them, so that they can harvest us to be used as batteries. They like to harvest us during ascension, because this is the time when our bodies and souls are ripe. There are many tricks that the dark forces can use to deceive you to go with them. For example, if you are a Christian, the dark forces may manifest themselves to look like angels and then ask you to go with them into the light. They like to exploit your weaknesses, so that they can trick you to give your consent to them. One of the origins of the word ascension is derived from the Latin word ascensionum, which means arising. It is also derived from the noun of action from past participle stem of ascendia, which means to mount, ascend, go up. Based on these definitions, the word ascension means to go up or rise. What you need to know about ascension is that it is a spiritual and scientific process that utilizes the laws of nature to assist spiritual beings to evolve back to the Supreme Creator. This process allows all spiritual beings to eventually evolve and ascend out of time and space to unite with their higher identities of pure consciousness. The process of ascension involves increasing the particle pulsation rhythm of the body allowing the body to absorb high frequency energy into its morphogenetic field and therefore increasing its frequency. The more accurate term for this process is frequency accretion. This process causes your body to become lighter and less dense. It also causes your consciousness to expand, allowing you to ascend to higher levels of consciousness. Every religion of humanity has its own version of ascension. For example, some religions teach their followers that only the chosen people can ascend or only God can make someone ascend. Other religions, for example, the New Age, claim that extraterrestrials, ETs, will come from outer space and help us ascend. In Christianity, it is taught that Jesus will one day come from the heavens and save his people and bring them back to the kingdom of God. With so many different versions of ascension, how do you know which one is correct? To know if the ascension technique you are using will help you achieve spiritual freedom, ask yourself this question, does this version of ascension teach me knowledge of empowerment and truth, and how to be responsible for my spiritual growth? If your answer is no, you should stay far away from it. Any teaching that teaches you to rely on a savior to save you is not going to empower you to achieve true spiritual freedom. This type of teaching is the teaching of the dark forces, because it teaches you to think and act like a slave. 
The idea that a messiah or some alien race is coming to save us is a psychological operation created by the dark forces to keep us living in a state of mental slavery. To find more evidence that the dark forces may be planning to harvest humans during ascension, we need to investigate and study some of the hidden messages in the movie Jupiter Ascending. Before we do this, you need to be aware that the dark forces and their minions like to show you what they are doing to the human race or are planning to do to humanity in movies and TV shows. The Matrix is one of the best examples of a movie that shows you the agendas of the dark forces. One of the main reasons why the dark forces and the dark magicians show you their agendas in movies and TV shows is because they do not want to violate your free will. Furthermore, most people do not take the messages in movies and TV shows seriously. This allows the dark forces to show their agendas in plain sight without worrying about people becoming aware of their evil deeds. Be aware that they also like to use other media to reveal their agendas, such as video games, music videos, and magazines. By telling us what they are doing to the human race in movies, TV shows, music videos, video games, etc. The dark forces and their minions are giving us a choice and a chance to say number. When we ignore their messages and choose not to say anything, it means that we do not really care about their agendas, therefore, the dark forces can use that as an excuse to go ahead with their diabolical plans. Remember, silence is a form of consent. To not give your consent to the dark forces, you need to be aware of what they are doing. Your awareness is one of your most important spiritual powers for stopping the dark forces. When you become aware of what they are doing, you can say number. If enough of us say no, the dark forces will have to back off. If they refuse to back off and take actions to harm us, they will have to deal with the cosmic forces and the justice system of the universe. All thoughts, intentions, and actions are known by the universe and there is no escaping its laws. Let us focus our attention back to the movie Jupiter Ascending. Shortly after the halfway point of this movie, there is a scene where Titus shows Jupiter a room full of thousands of vials that contain youth serums. By drinking the serums, it allows Titus and his people to live for thousands of years. What was shocking about the serums was that they were made from harvesting hundreds of dead humans. Based on my research on occultism, the secret ingredient that gives the serums the healing effect of longevity is Ica, the golden blood plasma that is believed to be produced in the human spine. Here is an excerpt from the movie script of Jupiter Ascending. This part of the script talks about the youth serums that allow Titus and his people to live for thousands of years. Titus, come with me. Jupiter, what is that? Titus, it has many names. Reginx, Ricel, Nectar. There are various levels of usefulness and quality. But this is the most pure and most valuable solution made by the house of Abrasax. Jupiter, Calic came out of a bath. Titus, naturally, my sister didn't explain what it is or where it comes from. It comes from people. Each unit is refined from approximately a hundred human beings. Jupiter, what? Titus, your planet is a farm. Jupiter. There are thousands of planets like yours set up by families like mine to supply an ever increasing demand for more time. Jupiter, are you saying you killed a hundred people to make this? Titus, not me, but dot yes, someone did. Not unlike butchering a herd of cattle. Jupiter, oh, my god. Titus, it's all right. It's all right. My mother went through a profound change at the end of her life. She felt exactly as you do now. But when she tried to do something to stop this business, she was murdered. I believe the same thing is about to happen to me because I began to carry out the work she started. That is why I hired Mr. Wise to find you. 42 When Titus says to Jupiter that planet Earth is a farm for supplying an ever increasing demand for more time, he is telling her that humans are being raised like livestock, so that when they grow up and become mature or ripe, they can be killed to make youth serums. Do you remember what I said in chapter 5 that humans are the livestock or living stock of the stock market? When you take a step back and look at the big picture, Earth is a farm for raising humans. This farm is the matrix. Maybe this is why the dark forces created many programs to brainwash people to raise and sacrifice animals for food. When we raise and sacrifice animals for food, it gives the dark forces the excuse to sacrifice us for food too. Like they say, Karma is a bitch. By now you should know why the dark forces created the savior program. If you still do not know why, 
I will say it again because it is very important that you comprehend what the Savior program is really about. The idea that ETs will come save us or that a Messiah will descend from the clouds to rapture the chosen people to heaven, is a psychological operation designed to trick us to give our consent to the dark forces, so they can harvest our bodies for golden blood plasma and energy without directly violating our free will. Do you remember what I said in chapter 4 about why the word rapture means snatching or abduction? One of the origins of the word rapture is derived from the Latin word raptus, which means a carrying off, abduction, snatching away, rape. Therefore, the deeper meaning of the word rapture is snatching or abduction. Every time people die, their souls are raptured, abducted to heaven. This heaven is not the kind of heaven that people think it is. Instead, it is another control system of the matrix used by the dark forces to trick naive and cowardly souls to go back into their reincarnation program. The good news is that the dark forces can only harvest you and take your DNA and golden blood plasma with your consent, so stop giving them your consent. To effectively stop giving them your consent, you need to learn how to defend your natural rights. A great website that teaches you how to defend your natural rights is privatist.me. Let us focus our awareness back to Christmas. Another popular symbol of Christmas is the star. Symbolically, the star on top of the Christmas tree, pine tree, spine is the pineal gland, which is the all-seeing eye or mind's eye that when opened it acts like a conduit allowing you to connect to your Christ slash God slash super consciousness. When activated and used wisely, the star, pineal gland can lead you to true enlightenment. This gland is sometimes referred to as the eye of Horace. Here is an excerpt from Freemasons Freemasonry.com that explains what the star represents in more details, within the craft degrees, the figure of the pentagram may also be seen in the image of the five-rayed blazing star. According to Albert Pike, the pentagram is synonymous with the blazing star of Masonic lodges, the blazing star in our lodges, we have already said, represents Sirius, Anubis, or Mercury, guardian and guide of souls. Our ancient English brethren also considered it an emblem of the Sunday. In the old lectures they said, the blazing star or glory in the center refers as to that grand luminary the sun, which enlightens the earth and by its genial influence dispenses blessings to mankind. It is also said in those lectures to be an emblem of prudence. The word prudentia means, in its original and fullest signification, foresight, and accordingly the blazing star has been regarded as an emblem of omniscience, or the all-seeing eye, which to the ancients was the Sunday vi, he further associates this star with the divine energy, manifested as light, creating the universe, 7. The Masonic scholar Rex Hutchins asserts that the pentagram is the symbol of the divine in man. The five-pointed star with a single point upward represents the divine. It also symbolizes man for its five-point salute to the five senses, the five members, head, arms and legs, and his five fingers on each hand which signify the tokens that distinguish masons. Furthermore he writes that this figure is the symbol of the microcosm, the universe where humans dwell. Since the pentagon which encloses the pentagram may be formed by connecting the five points of the human body, for many centuries the symbol was also used to represent humanity in general. Within this symbol then is a representation of humanity, and our divine role in the universe as co-creators of eternity.43 By now you should know that there is more to Christmas than meets the eye. To find other hidden meanings of Christmas, we need to turn our attention to the term Santa Claus and dissect it to find its occult meanings. After doing this, you will know why Christmas is not only a holiday for celebrating the sun, sun, but is also a holiday for celebrating Satan. Two of the origins of Santa Claus go back to ancient Egypt and Greece. In Egyptian mythology, the sun god Osiris was born on the 25th of December. During the anniversary of his birth, he would ride through the heavens in his chariot. 44 The Greek sun god Helios was also believed to be born on the 25th of December. Helios would also ride through the heavens in his sun chariot pulled by horses during the anniversary of his birth. Today, we have a similar character named Santa Claus that flies across the sky in his reindeer-drawn chariot on Christmas Eve. To find one of the hidden meanings of Santa Claus, 
you need to rely on the art of anagram or wordplay. The word Santu is an anagram for the word Satan. Santu is Satan. Have you ever wondered why Santa wears a red suit? The color red is sometimes used to represent the devil, which is why the devil is often red in color. Santa. Satan is the name and symbol used for representing the ideology of the dark forces. Is it hard for you to believe that a big belly old man in a red suit can represent Satan or the devil? Santu is also known as Saint Nick. The word Nick is etymologically defined as the devil. As for the word Saint, it is derived from the Latin word Sanctus, meaning holy, phonetically. The word holy sounds similar to the word holly. One of the definitions of the word holly is any of numerous trees or shrubs of the genus Ilex. The wood of holy trees was used by the druids to make magic wands. The druids believed that holy trees had magical powers, which was why they used them to make magic wands. Today, certain magicians who practice real magic still create magic wands out of the wood of holly trees. Another word that has a strong connection to the word holly is holiday. Holiday is holy day or holy day, meaning a day of magic. Most holidays are magic rituals created by the dark forces as ways to cast magic spells on people who participate in their holidays slash holy days slash magic days. Christmas is one of the best examples of a holiday that is saturated with magic rituals. This is why the stems, leaves, and berries of holly trees are often used as Christmas decorations. The word holy translates into the Norwegian language as the word Kristorn. When you split the word Kristorn into two words, it becomes Kristorn. Phonetically, the prefix Christ sounds similar to the word Christ. The word Christ is derived from the Greek word Christos, which means the anointed. The occult definitions of the words in this section show the connection among the words holy, holiday, Christ, magic, and saint. Because you now know some of the occult definitions of the word Santa, let us explore the hidden meanings of the word clause. Doing this will make it easier for you to understand the deeper meanings of the name Santa Claus. The word clause from the phrase Santa Claus was taken from the word claustrum, which is defined as the one of the four basal ganglia in each cerebral hemisphere that consists of a thin lamina of grey matter separated from the lenticular nucleus by a layer of white matter. Take out the letters T, R, U, and M from the word claustrum and you are left with the word clause. Here is an excerpt from an article published on esotericonline.net that does a great job of explaining the connection among the words clause and claustrum and the character Santa Claus. Saint Nick. The claustrum is a thin sheet of isolated grey matter, found just medial to the island of Real. Santi says it is a sheet of peculiar grey substance, and is made up of fusiform, spindle-shaped, cell bodies. It is from this claustrum that contains yellow substance within its outer greyish exterior, that the wonderful, priceless oil is formed that flows down into the olivary fasciculus descending with the rubrospinal tract through the reticular formation in the pons and medulla to the lateral column of the spinal cord. It terminates in the grey matter of the spinal cord, probably giving off collaterals to corresponding nuclei in the brain stem. Santi. This is the oil, the precious gift of which the Bible speaks, Thou anointest my head with oil. And not only is there oil manufactured within this special laboratory of the brain, but there is actually an olive tree which bears actual olives so named in any anatomy. The two olives are two infinitesimal eminences on either side of the medulla, with the pyramid between. They are one half inch in length. It is found well developed only in the higher mammals. They are really, santi, stations between the cerebrum and the cerebellum and between the spinal cord and the cerebellum. This oil is the most sacred substance in the body. It is the quintessence of gold. The gold of offer most truly a rare gift. Globules of oil are found in the vital fluid, the semen, and when the prodigal son has wasted his substance, he finds that it takes a long time to replace the deficiency and make good the looted bank account. Dot. The olives, which contain the oil, are the reservoirs the relay stations, of course, which furnish the oil for the lamp, the pineal gland, at the top of which is the flame or eye. When the Kundalini, the serpent fire that lies concealed within the sacral plexus is awakened, burns up the dross within the spinal cord, and reaches the conarium, it sets fire to this oil and thus lights the perpetual lamp, which gives the light to the whole house. 45 The word clause 
claustrum represents the precious gift, holy oil that is secreted in the brain. Symbolically, the spine is the chimney that the holy oil travels up and down on. When this holy oil reaches the pineal gland, single eye, lamp and interacts with the kundalini energy, it lights and activates the pineal gland, causing it to become all-seeing or illuminated. Symbolically, this is the all-seeing eye on the back of the one dollar bill, which is the symbol that the Illuminati like to use to represent their secret society. This is why the King James Bible verse Matthew 6 colon 22 23 says, The light of the body is the eye, if therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness. The English Standard Version of the Bible verse Matthew 6:22 even says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So, if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. This verse is talking about the pineal gland which is the single eye. When the holy oil within the pineal gland is ignited by the kundalini energy, it lights up the body like a lamp, not in a literal sense but in a metaphorical sense. Sometimes, the verses in the Bible are written in riddles, so if you want to find the really important knowledge hidden in the Bible, you need to learn how to decipher its riddles. Based on the occult definitions in the last few pages, Santa Claus, Saint Nick is a witch, devil that comes during Christmas. Christmas Eve to take the precious gift, holy oil, golden blood plasma, X and Y chromosome, and DNA of humans slash humans. When you put gifts under the Christmas tree, spine, you symbolically tell Santa, Satan that you consent to give your precious gift, holy oil, golden blood plasma, X and Y chromosome, and DNA to Santa, Satan on Christmas. Christmas Eve. What most people do not know about Christmas is that it is a religious ritual and magic contract. The creators of this ritual, which are the dark forces, like to use it to trick people to give their consent to them. What you need to know about rituals is that they have energetic binding forces attached to them. These binding forces are not dependent upon personal knowledge or beliefs. By simply taking the action to perform the holiday, magic day ritual known as Christmas, the effects and results are achieved, and therefore you are bound to whatever the ritual is designed to do. When you take the action to put presents under the Christmas tree, it symbolically tells the dark forces that you consent to give them your holy gifts, which are your energy, holy oil, golden blood plasma, X and Y chromosome, and DNA to trick us to participate in the Christmas holiday slash holiday slash magic day ritual, the dark forces made Christmas very appealing which is why there are so many cute creatures, colorful decorations, delicious foods, sweet candies, and cheerful music during Christmas and other holidays. The purpose for doing these things is to attract us to participate in their holiday rituals, so they can seduce and hypnotize our minds, allowing them to drain our energy and enslave our souls. The dark forces are masters of manipulation and very cunning. To protect yourself from the magic spells of the Christmas ritual, you need to first become aware that they exist. After that you need to remove your consent and stop putting presents under Christmas trees. Doing these things will nullify some of the magic spells of the Christmas ritual. If you plan to celebrate Christmas, it would be wise to meditate before doing so. During meditation, tell the universe or the supreme creator that you do not consent to participate in the Christmas ritual of the dark forces. Furthermore, Tell the universe or the supreme creator that you are getting together on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to spend time with your families and friends, not to celebrate Christmas. When you say these things, your mind generates energy signatures and then projects them out into the universe. These energy signatures tell the dark forces that you are aware of their Christmas ritual and do not consent to it. If the dark forces were to not honor your decision and harm you, they would violate your free will and therefore would have to face the consequences for their actions. All thoughts, intentions, and actions are known by the universe and there is no escaping its laws. You may also want to use your power of thought to create a protection barrier around your home to shield it from demonic entities and evil spirits. You can do this by imagining a protection barrier of white light surrounding your home with the intention to shielding all evil spirits and negative thought form entities from entering your home. Spend some time doing this and use the energy of nature to help strengthen the barrier. You can also strengthen 
strengthen the protection barrier by asking a few people to participate in the process of creating it. It is best to ask people who are open to the idea of creating protection barriers or magic spells. People who are not open to this idea can actually prevent the barrier from functioning effectively. This can happen because their thought patterns and beliefs can prevent the barrier from manifesting properly. Before doing a protection barrier, cleanse your home of negative energies and spirits that you do not want inside your home. For a stronger protection, you need to learn how to do protection spells. These spells often require you to have certain supplies, for example, candles and herbs. Furthermore, you need to know how to use certain sacred symbols, and chant certain sacred words and sounds. As for gifts, it is acceptable to give gifts to friends, family members, or strangers but avoid putting gifts under the Christmas tree. Remember, symbolically the Christmas tree is your spine and the gifts are the parts and fluids of your body, such as your holy oil and DNA. The occult meanings of Easter Another popular holiday that people like to celebrate is Easter. This holiday slash holiday slash magic day has a strong connection to Christmas and is also filled with occult symbolism. Two of the origins of the word Easter are derived from the Old English word Easter and Proto-Germanic word Osteron, which means dawn. Osteron is also the name of a goddess of fertility, spring and sunrise whose feast was celebrated at the spring equinox. One of the common definitions of Easter is an annual Christian festival in commemoration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, observed on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox, as calculated according to tables based in Western churches on the Gregorian calendar and in Orthodox churches on the Julian calendar. To find the occult meanings of Easter, you need to know what Jesus represents in the religious story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In this religious story, the character Jesus does not represent a man, instead he represents the sun that rises in the east and sets in the west. Because of this, one of the occult meanings of Easter is a day for celebrating the sun and the spring equinox. To be more specific, Easter is a holiday for celebrating the light overpowering the darkness, which occurs during the spring equinox. After the spring equinox, the days get longer and the nights get shorter. This holiday can be celebrated anywhere from March 22nd to April 25th. Easter does not have a fixed date for the reason that it is celebrated on the first Sunday following the full moon that occurs on or following the spring equinox. March 21st. Two of the most popular symbols of Easter are the rabbit and the egg. During Easter, these two symbols are used to represent fertility. Easter does not really have anything to do with the resurrection of a man named Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is just a symbol used for representing many different things in Christianity. However, this does not mean that there was not a man from the past who taught about the Christ principles. What most people do not know about Easter is that certain ancient civilizations celebrated this holiday long before the existence of Christianity. It was during the 60th 70th centuries that when this original pagan holiday was incorporated into Christianity and the Catholic Church, it would officially become a Christian holiday and would be assigned in the Bible of the New Testament to the day of Christ's resurrection and thereafter after was called Easter. The English word Easter is derived from an Old English or Anglo-Saxon word Easter or Elster, or Astarte slash Astarte, who was an ancient fertility goddess that various Anglo-Saxon tribes worshipped during the start of this sixth age when they had celebrated this time of year as the sun's pass over time, and to whom sacrifices were annually offered. Before the Anglo-Saxons had worshipped Astarte, she was called by the Sumerian Inanna and later the Akkadian Ishtar whose temple priestesses were the women of Ishtar, Ishtaritam and sacred prostitution was part of this religion or cult and their temples served as houses of prostitution, in which the priestesses were prostitutes. In the east, to the Phoenicians, Canaanites and Babylonians she was the goddess that was known as Astoth or Ishtar. She was also the Babylonian Venus or goddess of love and the consort of the pagan fire god. Bal.46 Here is an excerpt from LastTrumpetMinistries.org that explains the deeper meanings of Easter in more details. The first thing we must understand is that professing Christians were not the only ones who celebrated a festival called Easter. Ishtar, which is pronounced Easter was a day that commemorated the resurrection of one of their gods that they called Tammuz, who was believed to be the only begotten son of the moon goddess and the sun god. In those ancient times, 
There was a man named Nimrod, who was the grandson of one of Noah's son named Ham. Ham had a son named Cush who married a woman named Semiramis. Cush and Semiramis then had a son named him Nimrod. The Bible tells of of this man, Nimrod, in Genesis 10 to 8 10 as follows, and Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He 46 Gnostic warrior. What is the meaning of Easter? http colon slash slash gnosticwarrior.com slash easter dot html chapter 6 word magic and the forbidden secrets of religion was a mighty hunter before the lord wherefore it is said even as nimrod the mighty hunter before the lord and the beginning of his kingdom was babel and ir and akkad and kalneh in the land of shinar nimrod was eventually killed by an enemy and his body was cut in pieces and sent to various parts of his kingdom. Semiramis had all of the parts gathered, except for one part that could not be found. That missing part was his reproductive organ. Semiramis claimed that Nimrod could not come back to life without it and told the people of Babylon that Nimrod had ascended to the sun and was now to be called Baal, the sun god. Queen Semiramis also proclaimed that Baal would be present on earth in the form of a flame, whether candle or lamp. When used in worship, Semiramis was creating a mystery religion, and with the help of Satan, she set herself up as a goddess. Semiramis claimed that she was immaculately conceived. She taught that the moon was a goddess that went through a 28-day cycle and ovulated when full. She further claimed that she came down from the moon in a giant moon egg that fell into the Euphrates River. This was to have happened at the time of the first full moon after the spring equinox. Semiramis became known as Ishtar which is pronounced Easter, and her moon egg became known as Ishtar's egg. Ishtar soon became pregnant and claimed that it was the rays of the sun god Baal that caused her to conceive. The sun that she brought forth was named Tammuz. Tammuz was noted to be especially fond of rabbits, and they became sacred in the ancient religion, because Tammuz was believed to be the son of the sun god, Baal. Tammuz, like his supposed father, became a hunter. The day came when Tammuz was killed by a wild pig. The queen told the worshippers that when Tammuz was killed by the wild pig, some of his blood fell on the stump of an evergreen tree, and the stump grew into a full new tree overnight. This made the evergreen tree sacred by the blood of Tammuz. She also proclaimed a 40-day period of time of sorrow each year prior to the anniversary of the death of Tammuz. During this time, no meat was to be eaten. Worshippers were to meditate upon the sacred mysteries of Baal and Tammuz, and to make the sign of the tea in front of their hearts as they worshipped. They also ate sacred cakes with the marking of a tea or cross on the top. Every year, on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, a celebration was made. It was Ishtar's Sunday and was celebrated with rabbits and eggs. Ishtar also proclaimed that because Tammuz was killed by a pig, that a pig must be eaten on that Sunday. 47 By now you should know that Easter is a holiday that has a lot of occult and sexual symbolism. In addition, you should know that it is a holiday for celebrating the sun, the light of the world and the savior of mankind. Why is the sun the savior of mankind? Because it produces sunlight and ejects it towards Mother Earth to nourish and fertilize her so that she can produce life during the spring season. One important thing you need to know about ancient myths that have a lot of occult symbolism is that many of them were created to teach people moral lessons. However, many of them were also created to poison people's minds with disempowering ideas. Another important thing you need to know about ancient myths is that many of them have empowering truths. These truths are often hidden behind allegories and riddles. Because of this, it would be wise for you to study ancient myths and take them seriously. You can learn a lot about life and reality from deciphering and studying the knowledge in ancient myths. Ancient myths are still alive and well today due to the fact that many of them are found in modern holidays and religious stories. Because of this, they are still shaping human culture. Unfortunately, Many holidays that have these ancient myths were created by the dark forces to trick people to enter into contracts with them. If you celebrate their holidays, through your action you are giving your consent to them. Once you do this, the Supreme Creator refuses to send its cosmic forces to penalize or punish the dark forces, because they did not violate your free will. However, if they were to violate your other natural rights, 
they would be liable for their actions. The law of free will plays a very important role in the Earth Matrix drama. Within this law holds one of the keys for freeing humanity from the Matrix. If most of us comprehend that the dark forces cannot enslave us without our consent and participation, we can end this drama in no time by removing our consent and support. Once enough of us do this, it is game over for the dark forces and their new world order. 20 Solutions for Freeing Humanity There are many solutions for freeing humanity from the matrix of the dark forces. Based on my research, knowledge, and experience, some of the best solutions for freeing humanity involve personal responsibility and natural law. If the following solutions work for you, I encourage you to share them with other people. The more people know how to free their bodies, minds, and souls from the matrix, the faster we can restore our freedom and sovereignty. Here are 20 effective solutions to empower you and other people to achieve spiritual freedom. I suggest you pay attention to the solutions that resonate with you and learn to apply and adapt them to your situations. 1. True freedom requires personal responsibility, with freedom comes great responsibility. Freedom and personal responsibility are like two sides of one coin. You cannot have true freedom without personal responsibility. If you were to be given too much freedom without personal responsibility, you would eventually harm yourself or worse harm other people. When you harm people, it is a direct violation of natural law. The consequence of harming other living beings is very serious. Here is a great example of a situation that explains why true freedom requires personal responsibility. Pretend that you have a five-year-old child. Would you be willing to leave your five-year-old child at the mall or state fair by himself? Let me guess. Your answer is no, right? A five-year-old child is too irresponsible to be given that kind of freedom. When you lack personal responsibility, you will always need authorities or government institutions to govern you. Because of this, you will never be able to achieve true spiritual freedom. 2. The light at the end of the tunnel trap. After your body dies, one of the dark force's favorite tricks to prevent you, the soul, spirit, from leaving their matrix is the light at the end of the tunnel trap. They like using this trap because they know human souls are attracted to the light. Once you walk into the light, you unknowingly go back into their matrix. The act of walking into the light at the end of tunnel is a form of consent, so you better make sure it is the right light. The light that you should follow is the light within your heart. The dark forces also like to manifest themselves to look like angels or someone you loved, so they can trick you to go back into their matrix. Shortly after you go back into their matrix, your memory is wiped clean and you have to play their matrix game all over again. 3. Be wary of religious music. Another popular technique that the dark forces like to use to trick you to go back into their matrix after your body dies is religious music, or music that sounds soothing and calming to your soul. Gospel music is a good example of this type of music. Maybe this is why they play gospel-like music in church to condition people ahead of time. Be aware that I am not saying gospel music is bad to listen to. The message I want to get through to you in this paragraph is the fact that the dark forces like to exploit your weakness using soothing music to hypnotize you in the astral plane. One thing you should know about all churches is that they are controlled by the Vatican, the religious center of the dark forces. To a certain degree, Catholic churches are controlled by the Vatican the most. 4. Avoid fighting the dark forces. It is not wise to fight the dark forces, because fighting them produces negative energy for them to feed on. In addition, fighting generates the right kind of energy to power their matrix. This is why they like to promote wars and conflicts among nations and ethnic groups. Even though it is not wise to fight the dark forces, be aware that you do have the right to defend yourself. One important thing you need to know about the dark forces is that they cannot be eliminated using physical weapons. The dark forces are astral beings, therefore, physical weapons are not very effective against them. Instead of fighting them, use the power of words, thought, and natural law to put them in checkmate. In addition, Remove your consent and reduce your support for their matrix as much as possible. Just like how any corporation needs your support to stay in business, the matrix also needs your support to exist. Once enough of us remove our support, 
the matrix will collapse on its own. You also need to support people who are creating systems that work in harmony with nature. These systems are important for empowering humanity to transcend the matrix. 5. Stop voting for treasonous politicians. As a United States citizen, your right to vote is not a right, instead it is a privilege. To be a United States citizen means that you are an agent of the United States, incorporated, and therefore are a legal person also known as a corporation, artificial person. A corporation is a fictitious entity that has no right. In other words, every time you vote you agree to be a corporate slave or a legal person, dead slash artificial person. Furthermore, you agree to allow the US government, which is a foreign corporation, to have jurisdiction over you. The right to vote in the United States is a big fat scam because the voting system is rigged so bad that your vote does not really matter. To make matters worse, when you vote, you are voting for a presidential candidate running for office of a foreign corporation, United States, Incorporated. If you do not live in the USA, your voting system is most likely rigged too. 6. Do not ignore the dark forces. You need to be aware of what the dark forces are doing so you can protect yourself from them. Ignoring them only makes it a lot easier for them to enslave the human race. One of the main reasons why the world is on the brink of destruction is because most people have ignored the dark forces. Remember, silence is a form of consent and ignorance is no excuse, especially in the internet and information age. 7. Study natural law. When it comes to spiritual freedom, educating your mind with knowledge of natural law and natural rights and applying them into your life are two of the most important things you can do. Why is that you may ask? Because learning how to live in harmony with natural law is a requirement for ascending to a higher level of consciousness that is beyond time and space. As you ascend to higher levels of consciousness, it allows your body to hold more high frequency energy, causing your spiritual powers, for example, love, thought, awareness, and consciousness to strengthen exponentially. Eventually, your spiritual powers will become so strong that you will be able to destroy planets and stars. Do you think the Supreme Creator will allow you access to that kind of power without being responsible and knowing how to live in harmony with nature? With great powers come great responsibilities. 8. Study man's law and the legal system. Besides studying natural law, it is also wise to study man's law, such as contract law trust law, common law, statutory law, corporate law, and admiralty, maritime law, and learn how to apply them into your life. In addition, study how the legal system works. Doing these things will help you find effective ways to defend your natural rights. You do not have to learn everything about these laws, but you should know them to the point where you are comfortable using them to defend your natural rights. When you learn to use natural law and man's law to defend your natural rights, you can effectively put the dark forces and their minions in checkmate every time they harm you and your property. This is how you can stop them without violent revolutions. One very important thing that the dark forces do not want you to know is the fact that the universe has its own justice system. The universe is a very intelligent being that knows every sentient being's thoughts, intentions, and actions. As long as you do not forgive the dark forces and their minions for harming you until after you get justice, they will eventually have to face the justice system of the universe. Whenever the dark forces and their minions harass or harm you, summon them by calling out to the judges of the universe's justice system that you want them to appear in front of the universe's justice system for violating your natural rights. Make sure you get justice and they are punished for their violation. When you do these things, they will run away from you like scared little kids. The dark forces are terrified of the justice system of the universe. 9. Stay away from nearly all types of protest. Many people have been conditioned to think that protesting is the way to restore freedom or create beneficial change. The unwanted truth is that protesting is not going to really change anything for the better. When you join a protest and speak out against the government, what you are really doing is telling the government that you want change but you want the government to do it for you. In other words, you are still an incompetent child who does not want to take full responsibility for your life and future. Without responsibility, there is no real freedom. 10. Arm yourself with knowledge of empowerment. 
The right knowledge is power but it is only powerful when you learn how to use it wisely, knowledge is the key to empowering you to overcome your fears and achieve spiritual freedom. One of the main reasons why you are fearful of something is because you lack the knowledge to comprehend it. Once you gain the right knowledge to comprehend it, the fear eventually subsides and cannot control you anymore. Because of this, it is essential for you to seek the right knowledge to empower you to comprehend the dark forces, so you can rise above their matrix and achieve spiritual freedom. Remember, physical weapons are not very effective for stopping the dark forces, however, the right knowledge is. When you learn to wisely use the right knowledge to defend your natural rights and strengthen your spiritual powers, the dark forces cannot stop you from leaving their matrix. 11. Stop relying on a savior to save you. The savior program was created by the minions of the dark forces to enslave your body, mind, and soul. When you rely on a savior to save you, you are basically telling the universe that the supreme creator did not give you the required spiritual powers to achieve spiritual freedom. This is an insult to the supreme creator. If you need to rely on a savior to save you, you are not using your spiritual powers wisely and are thinking like a slave. 12. Stop supporting wars and crimes against humanity. All the major wars on earth have been engineered by the dark forces and their minions. The dark forces are obsessed with wars for the reason that wars create a lot of negative energy for them to feed on. 13. Spend money wisely. Money is a medium that represents your time and energy. If you want to make the world a better place, stop investing your money, time and energy, in companies that do not care about truth, freedom, natural rights, and nature. This is one of the easiest ways to effectively change the world for the better. For example, buy organic food instead of conventional food. Food that is not organically grown is often contaminated with environmental toxins, for example, pesticides, and GMOs. The action of people buying more organic food is already having positive effects. In the early 2000s, you would be lucky to find organic food at conventional grocery stores in the USA. If the prices of organic food are preventing you from buying it, be aware that conventional food is cheaper because it receives government subsidies. In other words, the money from taxpayers is being used to make conventional food cheaper than organic food. The purpose of this is to motivate people to eat more conventional food resulting in more sick people. A sick and unhealthy society is easier for the dark forces and their minions to control. Another great way to use money wisely is to shop at your local family stores and farmers market more than conventional stores. In addition, learn how to barter so you do not rely on money to buy everything. An excellent video that shows you how to barter wisely is titled Confusion of Money. If for some reason the link to the video does not work, do a quick search by typing the keywords of the title of the video in YouTube's search form and then click the search button. This video was created by Marcus, also known as Servant King. 14. Claim back your sovereignty. When you were born, your parents agreed to allow you to participate in the Earth Matrix drama by signing your birth certificate. By doing this, they unknowingly turned you into a property of the state, making you a corporate slave. To claim back your sovereignty, you need to remove your consent, correct your status, and nullify certain government contracts, for example, marriage license, birth certificate, social security card, and driver's license. Two websites that do a great job of teaching you how to effectively claim back your sovereignty are privatist.me and Curtis Richard Callenbuck. Size. 15. Avoid making contracts with the dark forces. One very important thing you need to know about a contract is that it does not need to be a piece of paper with terms and conditions written on it. For example, the act of participating in a religious ritual, such as Christmas or Halloween can bond you to whatever that religious ritual is designed to do. The dark forces and the dark magicians like to use contracts to trick you to agree to participate in their world of legal fictions, dead entities and artificial persons. By contracting with them, you are agreeing to play their matrix game to enslave the human race, therefore, they can prevent you from leaving their matrix. The good news is that their contracts are fraudulent, so if you know how to void contracts, you can nullify their contracts anytime you want.
16. Stop relying on politicians to create change. Most politicians in Western countries and some Eastern countries are bought off by the dark magicians and their corrupt bankers. Because of this, they do not work for the people anymore. Furthermore, politicians are often addicted to money and power. The dark magicians are well aware of this, which is why they pay politicians a lot of money and give them certain special privileges. In other words, politicians are living like royalty and can get away with many illegal activities. Because of these benefits, most politicians would rather protect the system of the dark forces than change it. Most politicians are comfortable where they are at, therefore, the last thing they want is for the system to change in a way that empowers the people. When the people become empowered, the government loses power, causing politicians to also lose power. 17. Invest in free energy technology. Many free energy devices have the power to reduce the cost of living by 90% or more, and some of them can produce electrical energy without consuming any fuel. Because of these features, free energy technology is a threat to the oil cartel. Once free energy devices are used by most of us to power our homes and vehicles, we can dramatically reduce our support for the oil industry. Oil is one of the top sources of revenue for the dark magicians and their new world order. If we can completely stop using oil as an energy source, the dark magicians will have less money to finance their engineered wars. 18. Learn to live peaceably. The dark forces and their minions rely heavily on wars and violence to keep their matrix operating efficiently. Because of this, it is wise to live peaceably with other people and support the unification of the human race. As long as we, the people of the world, are united as one race, the dark forces and their minions will not be able to achieve their dark agendas. 19. Write your own waiver to nullify fraudulent contracts. A well-written waiver can nullify all fraudulent contracts and remove your consent to be governed. Visit this web page to see an example of a well-written waiver. 20. Live like small communities. Have you ever been to small towns where people have their own doctors, teachers, mechanics, markets, farms, etc.? These small communities are self-sufficient and the people often know how to live in harmony with nature. Because of these features. They do not need to rely on the government to survive. If we want to free ourselves from the matrix, one of the things we need to do is to learn how to live like small communities. Some words of encouragement if you have read most of this book or all of its pages, I congratulate you for having the courage to explore beyond the conventional paradigm and seek the truth. I know walking the path of truth and standing up for the truth are not easy but it is the truth that will set you free. By now you should know that human beings have been enslaved for a very long time and are being used as batteries to feed the dark forces and their matrix. Unfortunately, most people are still spiritually asleep and lack the courage to face the truth. As a person who is spiritually awakened, it is up to you to decide if you want to share the knowledge in this book with other truth seekers to wake them up from the matrix. This book does not have all the answers but it has enough knowledge of empowerment to make the dark forces very nervous. The solutions in this chapter are effective for reducing the power of the dark forces, but to free the human race from the matrix requires a large number of people to use the solutions wisely. If we can get about 15% of the world's population to apply most of the 20 solutions into their lives, we can restore a good percentage of our freedom and sovereignty in less than one generation. Once this happens, it is just a matter of time until the people of the world totally free themselves from the matrix. Some of you may think that there is no way we can free enough people's minds to restore our freedom and sovereignty, because the dark forces control nearly everything that we do and have gatekeepers guarding every important entrance to the mainframe of the matrix. Do not let the dark forces intimidate you. In truth, when it comes to law and order, darkness will always surrender to light. Darkness is a state of randomness and chaos. When light comes in contact with darkness, it gives order to that chaos, causing it to structuralize. This process pushes the darkness away, showing that light is more authority than darkness. The dark forces are only succeeding because most people believe they are powerless. Remember, you are a spiritual being with infinite potential. You literally have the spiritual powers to create planets, stars, and even universes. One of the reasons why you do not have access to the full potential of your spiritual powers is because you lack knowledge, wisdom, love, experience, 
personal responsibility, courage, and faith. This causes you to become less aware of who you truly are and how to use your spiritual powers wisely. The matrix and the dark forces can only flourish on earth with the support of the people. You are one of the people, so reduce your support for the dark forces as much as possible. If you can, stop supporting them completely. Furthermore, take action to educate people who want to know the truth of what is happening to the human race. Also, learn to defend your natural rights and support the people who are creating systems and organizations to transcend the matrix. Once we have enough people working together to transcend the matrix, we can stop supporting the matrix and leave it for good. Without our support, the matrix will collapse on its own, and therefore the dark forces will not be able to control us anymore. This is how we can free the human race without violent revolutions. The fact that you are living on earth during the end of this age is proof that you have an important role to play in the earth matrix drama. It is time to wake up and remember your duty, so you can play your role in helping free humanity. Once humanity is free, you will also be free because the dark forces will not be standing in your way. Be strong and fearless, and may you be protected on your journey to spiritual freedom.